Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, June 6, 2016 at 7.15 p.m. First on our agenda is a vote to authorize and accept sale of bond anticipation note for $6 million for construction at Stratton School and modular classrooms. We have our treasurer and collector of taxes here, Mr. Gilligan. Thank you, Madam Chairman, members of the board. I'm here this evening to ask that you vote to execute the bond anticipation notes for $6 million. Uh, that is a partial borrowing of an appropriation authorized by town meeting. Four of the $6 million is for construction up at the Stratton School. Two of the $3.1 million appropriated for modular classrooms is also part of this note. Uh, the $6 million is the principal amount. There are carrying costs and issuance costs included, uh, which are basically minimal. Uh, we're borrowing the money now so that we can have it in our coffers prior to the end of the fiscal year so that effective July 1st, the shovel can be placed on the ground and we can start construction. Uh, it's a slightly new procedure in that we're having funds on hand prior to, to commencing construction for some of our projects. Uh, it's a way I've always liked to do business. Uh, Richard Visquet, the comptroller, is in full agreement that we should do this. And uh, when he called and said, let's get it done, I said absolutely. Uh, we will be uh, permanently financing the $6 million in the fall, along with the remainder of the total authorization, which is almost $11 million, along with the capital projects that were voted at the annual town meeting this past April. This vote that's before you was authorized at the special town meeting on January 25th. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. You didn't preempt my question already, Steve? I, no, I, why, why would I do that? <laughs> but so it, it's 11 million total, six now and then five, is that the idea? Correct. Okay. Yeah. And how much did we save, Steve, because of our triple A bond rating? Uh, well, we're saving $5,000 per year per million because it's at least an improvement of a half a percentage point. Um, but also by issuing this bond anticipation note, we're saving on interest because we borrowed at 2% instead of anywhere from 3 to 3.5%. So we'll be saving a little bit more money over the next six months. Awesome. Thank you. Is that a motion, Mr. Greeley? Yes, I move approval. Second. Moved by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Any further questions, discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you, Mr. Greeley. I thank the board for its time. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Next, we have our consent agenda, the minutes of the meeting May 26th, tw uh, May 23rd, 2016, establishment of the Vision 2020 gift account. A request for a special one-day beer and wine license on June 17, 2016 at Robbins Memorial Town Hall Auditorium for ACMI Awards Dinner. A request special one-day beer and wine license on June 18, 2016 at Robbins Memorial Town Hall Auditorium for a private wedding. Uh, two requests for contractor drain layer license, Coster and Sons Construction, Inc., 217 Rare, New Boston Street, Woburn, Mass., and Tim Zanelli, Excavating, LLC, 299 Main Street, North Reading, Mass. And then we have appointment of new election workers. Alan Kasha, 54 Medford Street, Republican, Precinct 12. Marjorie Cronin, 156 Wright Street, unenrolled, Precinct 21. Elaine Denning, 7 Crosby Street, unenrolled, Precinct 11. And George Parsons, 23 Brewster Road, unenrolled, Precinct 20. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Mr. Byrne. Second. Seconded by Mr. Dunn. Any comments on the agenda items? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. We now have a public hearing. Hearing underage sales and other alcohol license violations, Common Ground, 319 Broadway, Bob O'Gwin, Jr., manager. Um, if, with my colleague's permission, I'd like to call on our town council, Attorney Hine. Good evening, members of the board. The issue before the board tonight is whether or not Common Ground served alcohol to a person under the age of 21 on their premises in violation of Chapter 138, Section 34, in this specific circumstance by failing to require photo ID prior to service. To find a violation in this incident, there must be sufficient evidence that a person under 21 years of age was in fact served alcohol at Common Ground on the night of January 23rd, 2016. I paused to note just for clarification that the individual served was over 18, but under 21, and as such, while I and other witnesses may refer to the underage person as FB instead of a full name, we do so in the interest of privacy, not because FB was a legal minor. Uh, just to outline the process that will follow tonight, I'll provide a uh, brief summary of the case before the board. Then uh, there'll be a presentation of evidence, which is essentially a testimony from Inspector DeFrancisco from the Arlington Police Department on his investigation and findings. We'll allow time for 
uh, any uh, comment that the police chief who's with us tonight may want to make, any questions from the boards for the police department, uh, then we'll turn it over to Common Ground to present uh, their, uh, their presentation on the matter and take any questions from the board before we open for discussion and vote. Are there any questions before I start? No. So there's two primary sources of evidence in this case. One is going to be the uh, testimony of uh, Inspector Edward DeFrancisco of the Arlington Police Department, as previously noted, including his recollection of interviews, a review of common ground surveillance video, and other information available to APD. The second is the Police Department Incident Report and Supplemental in Investigation Report, uh, which has previously been provided to the board as well as Council for Common Ground. I respectfully submit to the board that the overwhelming majority of the facts uh, derived from this evidence won't be in dispute. A summary of the incident is on January 23, 2016, Common Ground employees called Arlington Police seeking assistance with a disruptive customer. Upon arrival at approximately 11.30, APD patrol officers were advised that an individual identified throughout as FB here had damaged their property in a bathroom and been generally disruptive. Upon arrival, APD escorted FB off the property without further incident, but noted that the only identification on his person was a bank card. Using the bank card, they were able to confirm that FB uh, at the time was 20 years old. Subsequent investigation, primarily by Inspector DeFrancisco, revealed that neither FB nor two companions who left prior to any disruption were carded prior, prior to being served a handful of beers, approximately one to two per person, as such, APD concluded that a person under 21 years of age was in fact served alcohol and was not carded. Um, but now I'd like to call uh, Inspector Edward DeFrancisco uh, to answer a few questions and then put together his summary of his investigation and findings. <coughs> Excuse me. How you doing? Good evening. Good evening. So Inspector, before you uh, present your summary, uh, can you please uh, tell the board uh, about your general career with the Arlington Police Department? I've uh, been a police officer for uh, 11 years with the Arlington Police, seven years as an inspector, uh, first four years as a patrol officer. And just to clarify for the record, an inspector with the Arlington Police Department has the same duties and responsibilities as a detective in most other police departments? Yes. And how would you characterize those responsibilities? Uh, just uh, investigation, okay. uh, most. And in terms of alcohol compliance, could you provide the board a very brief description of your experience with alcohol compliance in Arlington? Uh, up in uh, our Criminal Investigations Bureau, we're in charge of um, performing all the alcohol compliance uh, checks with all the restaurants and bars and anyone who has a liquor license every year. So I've been part of that several times. And you've conducted and supervised a number of those compliance checks? Yes. Thank you. Uh, if you would please uh, describe your investigation and findings and summary to the board. If I have any follow-up questions, I'll go ahead and ask them after you're done. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, um, <clears throat> I was assigned the investigation. Uh, I was not there on the initial evening, uh, assigned the investigation after uh, that date. Uh, I went there, I spoke with the manager as well as the bartender, um, both in agreement that they did, uh, the bartender did not ID these individuals. Um, the comment was he thought they were 35 years old, or in their 30s, so he did not ID them. It was also confirmed that they were not ID'd through the video, which they were very cooperative. They handed over the video, and I reviewed that video, you know, um, created a timeline, everything in, out, a uh, number of drinks served, and it does not show there's any ID uh, made when serving the alcohol, so that's the gist of the, you know, the investigation so far, so. Inspector, if I could ask a few follow-up questions. Um, could you identify the name of the bartender that evening? Uh, yes, it's um, Hode, Mr. Hode. Okay, and did Mr. Hode provide any initial statement to police on the night in question that you can recall? Yeah, well, he, uh, during that evening in the initial report, uh, he said he couldn't remember if he ID'd them. Okay. Did he provide any other information that uh, provided any explanation for why a violation might have occurred? Uh, the, the, it was busy. Okay. Um, with respect to, uh, you mentioned there were other individuals uh, there that night who were served along with this person, FB, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And did those, were those individuals carded? No. Was APD ever able to uh, identify those individuals or their age? No. Okay. 
they left prior to, they, they were only there for about a half hour. So it's fair to say that we don't know whether those individuals were underage or weren't. Right. Thank you. Um, Inspector, uh, with respect to Sorry, bear with me one moment. Uh, the, uh, the individual in question didn't provide identification, uh, photo identification on the night uh, that he was served, correct? Correct. But how did APD uh, confirm his age that night? Uh, they, they were able to speak with him, get his ID from him you know, verbally, as well as through a bank card that he used to pay. Okay, so is it accurate to say that APD was able to confirm the night of the incident that he was under 21 years of age? Yes. And did you attempt to reach out to contact this individual, FB? Yes, several times. And did you get a response? No. Okay. Uh, Inspector, uh, were you ever able to uh, see clearly a photo of this individual, the underage person, FB? Yes. And where, did, where were you able to see a, 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 a photo of him? Uh, well, for, through the, during that night, they had run the individual uh, photos that were found of him or attached to the report, which I printed up and viewed in our Arlington police system. And one of these is a driver's license, correct? Yes. Uh, and in that, hmm, withdrawn. Inspector, uh, just to clarify, uh, you noted that you spoke with Mr. Hode, who was the bartender. Do you recall the name of the uh, manager that you spoke with at Common Ground? Yes. Uh, who was that? Mr. Can Kanzer. Kangser. And is there anybody else you spoke to aside from Mr. Kangser, uh, Mr. Hode, or attempting to reach out to FB about uh, the incident in order to uh, complete your investigation? No, those were the main. The material is Yes. All right, thank you. Uh, if the board has any questions, uh, now would be the time to ask Inspector DeFrancisco before we give Chief Ryan an opportunity if he has any comments he'd like to make. Okay, Mr. Carroll. Uh, thank you, thank you, Inspector um, and, and Council. Um, <clears throat> I did have one question. Um, you stated that when the, uh, Mr. Hode was um, uh, interviewed initially, he said he couldn't remember if he had uh, I ID'd these uh, three individuals. Um, and then in the police report, he said that he, he does, though, regularly check identifications on a regular basis. I don't know if there was a review of the tape for other portions of the evening that would show whether or not anyone was ever ID'd during that evening. Through the video that I watched, I, I did not see anybody. Anyone at all being ID'd. Right. It, there wasn't a tremendous amount of people at the bar. There was, you know, seats, seats were taken. There was a few empty seats. Um, so you would be able to see him if he, uh, you know, was to ask ID and take ID from people from, you know, from across the bar and serve them. So I, I, I didn't notice any through the video that I watched. Yeah, I, I just asked because it stretches incredulity for me to, to think that you wouldn't be able to remember whether you ID'd someone if you didn't ID anyone. If you had ID'd anyone at all, I could see there being confusion. So thank you. And just to follow up that, and then uh, Mr. Greeley, um, did Mr. Hode initially express that he thought he had or he had um, ID'd FB, and then as the investigation went on, um, he retracted that? Yeah, so the, the night, the initial incident that night that the officers uh, went there, his statement was he couldn't remember if he ID'd them. Then when I spoke with him, he said, he didn't ID them and because he thought they were in their 30s. Okay, thank you. Mr. Greeley? So, um, thanks for your excellent work as always. So, this young man, uh, he, he broke a mirror in the restroom. Was he arrested for vandalism or was, was he given an alcohol test? I mean, it seems like one beer is not enough to go in and break up mirrors. Right. I, I, I can't speak to that. I wasn't there that night uh, for the initial uh, that I believe there was three or four officers that responded there. Um, I don't, whatever their investigation was, um, 
he wasn't ch there was no charges from there i believe he would, we were called well the officers were called to remove him from right. from there and that was it right i mean I, I know he was only served one beer there but i was wondering whether in observing the video did they look rowdy or whatever i mean it's it, it just they didn't did not okay right. thank you it was too too okay. Two breaking up the restroom? No, it was two, two uh, beverages on video that I saw for that one individual. Oh, he had two, not... Right. Well, those three individual, three, a group of three. Right. Each one had two. Each one had two. Oh, okay. Purposes. Thank you. Um, a follow-up. On the video, you said that um, Common Ground provided you with that. Um, what was the duration? Was it the entire stay of these three individuals, or was it an excerpted amount of time? No, it was from when they entered till the officers cleared the scene, uh, escorting out FB. Okay. Um, so it, was, it was a couple out. I have a timeline. I think it started approximately 9.45 And the 11. incident was to 11? Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. And then um, you indicated that um, the party of three each had approximately two drinks. Did you happen to observe on um, the video any food being ordered or delivered to no. the table or to the bar? No. Um, FB, did he su suffer any injuries that night, uh, require any medical attention or refuse such attention? No. No. Um, I think Mr. Greeley covered this regarding property damage. Um, from what I lean from this, um, it seemed to me there was quite a bit of property damage um, that occurred. I think it was just limited to the uh, restroom? Yes. Okay, but it was from the way I saw and what was in the report in, in terms of the mannerisms of FB, um, it basically seemed to me like he was tearing the, re the restroom apart and that may have caused um, the Common Ground to contact I Islington Police Department. So it was yeah. a little bit more than the mirror? Yeah, um, I, well, I mean, when I spoke with the manager, mm -hmm. There was no, he didn't bring up to me any value, anything that, that happened in the bathroom at all, any damage or anything. Okay. And um, I believe you said this took place over 9.30 to approximately 11 p.m.? Yeah, it, it was, uh, I mean, te technically it was 9, 9.45 mm -hmm. to 11.41. And you indicated from what you viewed on the videotape, um, at least concerning the bar area, it wasn't, um, if it was a busy night, perhaps it wasn't there because I think you indicated some of the stools were unoccupied. Yes. Um, between 9.45 and 11 p.m., I know you have indicated uh, and identified Mr. Hode, the bartender and the manager, Mr. Kanziger. I apologize if I say that incorrectly. Do you know, was anyone else called? Uh, and or did anyone else of higher authority, the owner or uh, general manager, show up between 9.45 and 11 p.m.? Uh, not, not that I saw on video. Uh, no. Um, did any of our officers suffer any sort of injuries that night? No. no. Um, did um, yourself afterwards or any of the officers who responded that night ha have any other interactions with any other patrons? No. Uh, same question for the same individuals, especially the officers who showed up that night. Um, did they have any other interactions besides with um, Ms. Mr. Hood and Kanziger? No. no. Um, did any employee of Common Ground uh, voluntarily uh, either give statements to the officers on the scene or yourself in terms of uh, eyewitness account, or was it basically your investigation and gathering the facts? Yeah, was just, um, basically the initial report uh, statements that were given to those officers and then my investigation after. Okay. And I think what I heard from yourself and um, Attorney Heim, um, the individual we're referring to as FB, um, we've attempted to contact. Yes. I think we say him. I can say that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think I've been saying that. Um, and is it my understanding that sort of the converse, um, there are no uh, claims or contact by FB um, to the town for anything that he might feel we bear some responsibility. Correct. Correct. Um, is anybody? Um, I see we have the police chief here. If I could call on Chief Ryan. 
please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Frederick Ryan, Chief of Police, honorable members of the board, or is it, is it Board of Selectmen or Select Board? Still Selectmen. Select board. <laughs> but definitely honorable. Yes, sir. Um, thank you. Um, I just want to uh, briefly comment. I think the board knows that at your directive, uh, we take alcohol compliance um, very, very seriously in the community. We go to extraordinary measures to work with our license holders to help them comply uh, with the law and your regulations, and we commit necessary police resources to do so. Uh, I'm concerned about the pattern at this particular establishment. I think that the, the comment by the bartender about these young men looking over 30 uh, doesn't pass the reasonable person standard, and I would ask you to include that in your deliberations. And obviously, welcome the uh, available to answer any questions if you have any. Okay. I think I will, but um, um, I think at this point, Attorney Heim would call upon uh, representative from the co Common Ground and the manager? Or? Unless the board has any further questions of a factual nature uh, for Chief Ryan or Inspector DeFrancisco, at this point in time, I'd uh, ask that the representatives of Common Ground uh, present their version of events and any information they want to provide to the board. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, John Leone with um, Rob Gwynn, the owner of Common Ground, and Liz Martin, the, one of the new assistant managers. Um, first of all, they are very um, chagrined and saddened that this actually happened so soon after we had our prior meeting with you folks. Just to let you know, um, Eugene Hode was terminated within a week or two after the incident occurred, as were the two other assistant managers who were on, um, Angel Smith and Stephen Ramsdale. They have both also been terminated because of a, a general perce perceived lack of um, due diligence in managing the bar appropriately. Ms. Martin was then brought on, who had been a server there since they opened as the new assistant manager. Um, Bob is also there approximately 50 hours a week now, and Liz is at the bar 50, as well as Rodney um, Kings, Ken Kessinger, who is the general manager and was on that night, so he did speak to the officers and Detective DeFrancisco um, as the general manager, so he was the highest authority present that night and most of the time thereafter when the police came. Um, there were two items I had with um, Detective Fre De De Francisco's um, statement that contradicted the written report of the police, and I wonder if they could clarify that. Um, one, there was no broken mirror. Um, they'll both testify that that did not occur. There wasn't a broken mirror in the bathroom. There's no property damage on the, compl on the premises. And also the police report, and it states in the materials you were given, showed on the video that the gentleman was only served one drink. He wasn't served two drinks, and it also states that as they came in, they were offered menus for food. Um, the um, other thing that I did notice in the reports that were given to us was that Common Ground has passed all prior underage alcohol compliance um, tests that came in. They have not failed any of those. What happened this evening is very unfortunate. Um, what, as Liz will tell you, she was there that evening, they called the police as FB, had left the restaurant, very inappropriate out front, and again kept trying to come back into the restaurant. And they kept telling him, no, he's not going to be allowed to come back in because of his inappropriateness. That's when they called the police. Um, it's almost a, they shot themselves in the foot because they called the police. But I think it was the right thing for them to do, and they agree it was the right thing to do, because we didn't want this person out. Roaming, roaming the streets out there, potentially causing trouble to other people. As it turned out, it was the wrong thing for them to do. They had, the guy hadn't been carded, they admit it. Um, they have now, and I've turned over to Doug uh, Attorney Heim, the handbook that all the employees had, sir, had signed, passed, I'm not sure, Doug, did that get to, distributed to the yes. board? Okay. Well, I, I don't know if it was distributed to the board, but okay. yes, the handbook was was signed by all of the employees. Prior to the incident occurring. Um, Hode actually was TIP certified. Um, there was just no excuse for what he did. They recognized that and they, that's why he was let, let go. He had signed the book, he knew what the deal was and he let, was let go. Um, 
they do take alcohol compliance seriously. Uh, it may not seem like it at this incident and as a result of the prior incident, um, but they, since the inc this incident, there has been a total change of culture in the restaurant. As Liz will tell you, there's signs throughout the restaurant, card everybody, even if they don't look like they're 35. Two drinks, min maximum without food. So they, they really changed the whole culture of the restaurant since this incident in order to try and bring it back up to a place where it'll satisfy them as the providers and the town's rules. So if you have any questions of them, um, we'll gladly answer them. Uh, We'd love to address your questions and thoughts. Can, can I just clarify one point? Um, yeah. Uh, through Attorney Heim, um, to either the chief or um, the inspector, is it my understanding when um, the call came to dispatch, and I'm just, I don't know this for a fact at all, but an officers arrived um, that most of the, the uh, encounter and or initial confrontation with FB was inside the premises of Common Ground in the bathroom? I'm sorry. It's in the front foyer. If you can, can, if you can. It was in the, inside the restaurant, not in the bathroom. And um, was uh, the attention of the responding officers either drawn to the restroom or was it reported to the officers regarding any activity, physical or otherwise, that went on in the restroom? Um, I, I, I'm not sure. Right I, I know through uh, viewing the video mm -hmm. that most of the conversation was directly right next to the bar in the, the seating um, adjacent to the bar area. Okay, thank you. Mr. Greeley? So, will you, uh, Inspector, yeah. will you clarify, did I understand, I thought you said on the video you saw he was served two beers, and they're saying it's one, so. Yes, it was two. Yeah. He, he, FB, was served two beers, not one. Yes. And was there damage in the restroom, in, according to the police report? Yes. Well, there was, there was broken glass in the, ba in the bathroom. But not a mirror, I guess? Or? Um, it, do it doesn't specifically say mirror in there. It just, I don't know if it was a glass that he might, might have brought in there. Uh, okay. Again, I, I wasn't no, I there that night. But accurate. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, I, I just wanted to clarify that, and I, I'll say if I have to pick whose um, uh, rendition of, of what happened that evening, uh, since you seem to want to con contradict the police. No, I haven't finished a sentence. My, like my teacher always said, see the punctuation. Um, I, I certainly would um, lean towards uh, the report from the Arlington Police Department uh, from the officers on scene, our inspector, and, and our police chief. So um, I guess we're going to have to agree to disagree on that, uh, as well as your own video that you um, said you voluntarily provided would bear out the same. I was um, just going by the police report, which states one drink. How was it? I'm going by the, t do you really want to quibble back and forth? No, 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 I'm just All right, well, you are, but you are. I just going with I know, the but I'm report. going by, we're having the hearing tonight. Yes. And the testimony is coming to the board uh, through town council and others tonight. And um, that's what we're going by. So um, as well as any backup police reports. I don't know what squabbling over one or two beers to an underage, especially myself, you know, at the last hearing when we were here, I was the dissenting vote. I stated that um, I thought this establishment would make it until the end of August, that they would reoffend. I felt very confident about that. I expressed that to my colleagues. I even said it at the public hearing. So I, I wasn't chagrined or anything like that. Uh, I was just surprised at how soon it did happen. But um, before we go any further, I am sort of uh, taking more time and not allowing it. Any of my colleagues would like to, Mr. Curo? Uh, thank you very much. Um, I want to probe a little bit on the, well, the two things. Um, First of all, I guess in the, your testimony, you said that, that the police were actually called the to the establishment to prevent this individual from going out and causing trouble on the streets. But I heard from the police department that actually th that the establishment just wanted the individual removed. He was trying to regain entrance in. Yeah. So he was getting very belligerent, and that's when they called. Okay. So they, they Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know. Um, and I want to probe a little bit also on the, uh, the question of the establishment taking al alcohol seriously and taking this issue seriously. 
Um, I guess my first question is, um, you know, we had a very serious incident that we that we um, you know levied a, a, a punishment for, a sanction for, and we hadn't even we hadn't even <laughs> completely finalized it, and then and this this incident um, came down the pike. But my my question is, after that incident and after the results of our hearing and our decision, was there a discussion with all of the employees at Common Ground about what had happened and what measures had to be taken to prevent um, issues with uh, uh, alcohol service in the establishment? Um, so just to give everyone a little background, I was in the car that night with Jim and Kaylee, mm -hmm. okay? So please remember that. Um, with that, I have been, just to let you know, I have been uh, working for Bob in Alston as a server, and then I came over in Arlington, second day it was open. I have been working with them um, pretty much full time, and then I became a manager recently um, from being a server. So I know a majority of people in this town, and I absolutely understand where you guys are coming from, for sure, more than you guys can probably even imagine. I'm not justifying it by any means. I totally understand. Um, as far as that, uh, when it happened, I believe it was in December, yes, there was a lot, I'm um, sorry, January, there was uh, a lot of discussion about what happened. We had some new employees. We had some employees that were still there. Um, myself and Kayleen were still working there, so obviously we were talking about it. And it was not taken lightly by any means. And managers would just walk up to you and be like, did you card them? Did you card them? So. I, I understand absolutely where you guys are coming from, and I do want to let you know that it was taken seriously. It was. Thank you. And first of all, I'm you know I'm sorry that you had to you know witness and be part of such a uh, tragedy. But my question wasn't whether it was taken seriously and whether there were ad hoc measures to ask. What were the employees brought together, and were all of the the rules around alcohol regulation reiterated? And did Mr. Hode participate in those? Af oh, I'm sorry, I confused the event. The event with um, Mr. McLaughlin or the, um, the uh, with, uh, with um, Ho, the bartender after, he, after that incident. I was confusing. After that this board voted to sanction common ground for the first, the first incident. For the January yes. 15th, uh, 20. Yes. Were the employees brought together formally and were the the rules around alcohol com serving service compliance formally. I don't mean ad hoc, a manager comes up here and there. Were the rules yes. reviewed with everyone and did Mr. Hode participate in that review? Yes, absolutely, because I will tell you, I uh, was a manager during that time and we have pre-meal every day before lunch and dinner. And I can tell you that in manager notes, it said, please go over liquor, liquor rules every single pre-meal. Mm -hmm. I will tell you that, I know that. Okay. Okay, thank you. And is that done? Is that done? Have we done that? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. And with Mr. Hode? Yes, Mr. Hode was there. And he also, uh, it's also in that handbook. And I even brought all the handbooks back and said, this is what you guys signed when you came on. And we even opened it up and looked right at our alcohol policy in there. It's okay. serious. Okay. Absolutely, 100%. Okay, so as I'm probing further about the, the idea of taking alcohol serious. I, I want to just, if I might, Madam Chair, check with counsel. Uh, are we permitted to ask about certain other conditions we put on other permits that we've issued to this establishment? Does that play in at all? I, I think that if the selectmen want to inquire about general conditions, I think that that's fine. Okay. I, I just, the, the condition I ask about, I, I think the last permit that we issued to this establishment was for sidewalk furniture, and I think that was about month and a half ago or so, and I believe that there was a condition was placed on that permit asking that the alcohol advertising on the outdoor umbrellas be removed. And was that done? No, that was not done. That was I not done. We didn't, I didn't see that part of the uh, information. I mean, it'll be done immediately tomorrow, or actually tonight. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Carroll, could, Mrs. Kropelka, was there any communication from the selectman's office, either verbal, in writing, email, or otherwise? Uh, Assistant Billy Building Inspector, and it was sent. I want to tell you either last July because we were there, Mary Ann, myself, Ted Fields, and Rick. Uh, it was July or August saying that you had to take, and I 
want to say the Guinness sign. It's still there, Guinness. Yeah. And it was never taken down. I, that was I a registered don't. letter that he, I understand, was hand delivered down to you. I, I actually have never received that letter as it is to you. Well, but I mean, now that I know, I would be happy to take it down. No someone on your establishment. Probably uh, they did. I haven't finished. Someone on your establishment um, signed, and there was return receipt. So, um, and I do know I have, and others have made inquiries of the Board of Selectmen's office um, regarding that um, outdoor furniture. So, I know you're saying you weren't notified, but you were talking about all these managers you have in place and veteran managers and et cetera. Um, to me, that's a sort of a, a testament or testimony in terms of you know taking things seriously from this board of select i'm sorry mr carroll I uh, cut that's you off. fine and I, I think i would just follow up with just a similar thing i mean i think we all know how difficult it is to enforce sandwich boards in this town but i, I so you have one I, we know we know that a lot of establishments do it's very difficult to enforce but what's a bit of an insult to me is that there are drink specials i see on occasion on the sandwich board out in front of the the building and i feel that that's that, that just speaks to how seriously the establishment is taking it. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I think a lot of people in town enjoy your restaurant. You have a, a nice family atmosphere on, on one side. But if you're leading with that, I, I think it's just it's sending a message. So on one level, I, I think I'm not surprised that we're having some incidents like this. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's all I have for now. And, and what I've seen on the uh, sandwich board outside are two different, sometimes I just see um, advertisement of signature drinks, and sometimes I see advertisement of what I would call pairing, um, if you're highlighting a particular dish, um, and a suggestion for, again, what I would call a signature drink that would go hand in hand that. I've never been in Common Ground, I've hardly been in any restaurants just because of my family situation, and I've heard really great things in terms of people who have dined there, so I'm not saying because I didn't go there, that you don't serve good food. I just, anybody who knows me knows how hard it is. I'm lucky to get to these meetings, so I don't want to. Um, uh, Mr. Kiro? Uh, that, that's all I have for now. Mr. Dunn, did I have you there? Yes. Um, Mr. Leone, I just want to make sure, that, uh, so do I understand that largely the narrative that we heard is correct and that, uh, and that someone under 21 was served? Correct. Okay, thank you. Yeah, there's no denying it. All right. Um, Council Heim, just want to double check my recollection is right. This, uh, we've had one infraction from Common Ground, the, the one that we're talking about, like, you know, the, the, or sorry, one previous infraction, which was we decided in January of this year. And that's the only one before, that is the one. So you made a decision in December 7th. It was December, thank you. December 7th was when the board voted on a decision. Dis, uh, January was when the written formal decision was issued. Okay. But that's the only violation that Common Ground has on record. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Um, could I just call on the police chief? There, I think there was something, and then Mr. Byrne. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a point of clarification. Our staff uh, was able to do a, a chronological audit of the uh, transcript of the video. And um, while it's really irrelevant whether you served one or two beers, but for the credibility of the other side, um, FB was served at 9.45 and, and a second drink at 10.29 PM, two drinks. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Byrne? Um, yeah, so uh, it is unfortunate that um, you're all back here. Um, and I do want to thank the police department for their work on this and, you know, all of their work in town. Um, you know, was there any relationship um, previous between the bartender and FB that you know about? You know, was this a friend of his that came in and maybe he was trying to bend the rule for? No? Or Eugene, Eugene has worked for me for like 20 years before, mm -hmm. and I was very befuddled by the fact that he did what he did because he's usually very adheres to all the rules and laws of what we do. So immediately it was just like he, he basically he turned around and he said, I know, I'm not going to come back. Mm -hmm. I apologize, and he left. So we, uh, the rules, if you don't know anybody, check out IDs. Mm -hmm. If they don't look like they're at least as old as me, check their IDs. It makes no ifs, ands, and buts about it. Yeah. So there's nothing else we can say except for he messed up mm -hmm. and the rest of us had to pay. Just for my uh, going forward, if you could also use the individual's last name because I'm assuming Eugene is Hode. Yeah, yes. And yes. I don't know who Jim and, but, but Mr. Okay. Byrne has the right. floor. Sorry, um, I just write last no, name. That's right. um, no, that's, um, you know, I mean, and, and we do, we've heard a lot about policies, but it doesn't seem like really the policies are, are really working. So, you know, I think that it really has to be considered moving forward. Um, 
and how to actually implement what's being written down on paper and what's being said here. Um, and the other question I have is, you know, you said that there were two assistant managers who have since moved on from Common Ground who were yes. working that night? Yeah. But they, they, um, they were part of the policies and being a little bit too lackadaisy on um, following it through on procedures. But, but, um, but the, the general manager, um, Mr. Kessen, right. Kessner, right. Um, but he's still employed there. He was suspended for two weeks without pay for that. Incident. Two weeks without pay for yeah. that? Okay. And is that, you know, would, would that be like, is that pretty common and that's a penalty that you will well, have on the books? Or? Right. He's, he's relying on his employees to do what the rules say and, and he mm -hmm. stands behind them like, you know, he goes out there not going to go check everybody at the bar. He assumes and makes assumptions that everybody's IDs have been checked. And, and, you, and there were no other... Um, you know, say in the staff training that night, there's nothing that the general manager seemed to skip over, or did he, you know, go through kind of the dot all the T's? I wasn't uh, there, but across the T's? No. I, yeah, I wasn't there, but the rules are basically you just step through every procedure, like make sure you check everybody's IDs, make sure you uh, no more than two drinks, menu's always out in front before you even serve them, just to make sure. Okay, but uh, did I? I thought I heard earlier that there were you know nightly meetings uh, about night. and, and that and the general manager held that meeting and you know was responsible for talking to all the employees that night. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Um, just a few questions. I'm sorry, I didn't get you. Oh, uh, Mr. Could I just get your last name? So when I do. Uh, Marston. M A R S D E N. Okay, Mr. Greeley. Yeah, uh, I was going to ask the same question about the general manager, but I am curious, um, was Mr. Hogue the bartender on uh, New Year's Eve 2015? No. Okay, no. And, uh, but you were also not there on New Year's Eve 2015, and you were not there this night as well? Correct. Okay. So, but you do work there 50 hours a week? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Tuesday, Thursday, Friday that's night, now. Saturday night. I'm sorry, sir. That's... That's not recognized that Bob needs to be there. Okay. After, after this latest incident. Okay. Good. And then Thank you. just wiped the slate clean and said, okay, follow my rules 100% with me behind you. Good. Okay, sorry, Mrs. Uh, Madam Chair. Mr. Kiro. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to follow up and just thank clarify you. one thing. Um, at first, I, I, I guess I misunderstood that Mr. Hode had been terminated one or two weeks after. Mm -hmm. um, after the incident. Now it sounds like he actually quit of his, his own volition. He wanted to. He was basically leaving. I said, let's see what happens. Let's find out exactly the truth behind everything else. And once I came back with the facts of the police report, then it was like, you had to go. Um, and I, I'm sorry, I didn't get Ms. Marsden's title at, at Common Ground now. So, I'm a manager. Yeah. Manager. Um, and from what I understand, um, or I'm going to ask it individually, was Mr. Hode fired or did he quit? He was fired. Was, uh, is it Mr. or Ms. Angel Smith? Was that individual fired or did they quit? He basically left. Yeah, he, he left on his own reconnaissance. So he quit. Um, and Mr. Stephen Ramsdale, was he fired or did he, he quit? He was fired. He was fired. Um, I'm kind of... Uh, Curious with the um, Mr. How do you say his name, Mr. Ken Geyser? Kensinger. Kensinger. Um, he, he was on that night. Correct. And uh, you made a statement that he was saying he was assuming that things were happening. And I understand Ms. Marsden was also on that night, and you indicated that many times. Um, you'll go over and check to make sure everybody had been carded. Um, what was the breakdown? How did you identify it? And I still haven't heard how you rectified it with the uh, manager on site, assuming things that had been done that hadn't and it didn't verify it. And perhaps what Ms. Um, Marsden, in, in uh, contradiction to what you say your, your uh, usual uh, custom and practice would be to make sure everyone got <coughs> um, carded, how did these three individuals somehow escape that um, practice? Is it okay if I speak? So I just wanted to clarify. Oh, can you just go to the microphone? I'm sorry. I just want to clarify. I guess I'm not a good communicator tonight. Um, and I wanted to interrupt him, but I couldn't. Uh, I was not there that night. That was my, that was from looking at the video myself and also talking with the general manager the next day when I came in and found out about the incident as was um, that he was trying to leave and that, I mean, Kessinger, we don't even call him that, 
Roni Kessinger, was um, wanted him to leave and he kept coming back in. So he did call the police because he wanted him to leave and then they did move to the front. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that first part of your question. And then, could you just remind me, and then I think you wanted more information about the interaction between uh, the manager, the GM, Kessinger, and that, um, and the individual that night. However, I was not there, so I wanted to cl clarify that to you. That was my conversation with the GM the next day, okay. that I knew that that had happened. Um, as far as uh, carding everyone that is ongoing, I meant that, like, ongoing daily, you know, since then. Okay, um, and I guess if I could ask a few questions, is, is Mr. O'Gwin? How do yeah. I? Say? O'Gwin, I'm sorry. I think I said O'Quinn before, and I apologize. I, I go by whatever. I should have put my glasses on. Um, a after the first incident, um, New Year's of last year, when we had a hearing, um, you had indicated that you were g going to step up reviewing policy and procedures, as well as making sure your managers and the like. Um, were uh, re-educated in terms of their responsibilities, as well as the fact that you indicated that you would be um, paying more attention and spending more hours there. I'm wondering if you could tell me um, what your hour, you know, how many hours you were in Common Ground pre the first incident, New Year's Eve uh, 2016, right? Yeah, because mm -hmm. it would. Um, and then what your hours leading up to this event are, what I'm looking at, this event occurred on a Thursday night. If January 28th is a Thursday night, I believe it is. Um, what what nights were you in pre-first incident, post-first incident, and now? And to equate to 60, I'm not asking you, I work 12 to 12. <laughs> you know, I'm just asking you the days. No, I, I basically beforehand, I would be coming in and out and spend about two or three hours, usually on an average every day, just checking out and coming through the evening, saying hi to everybody, see what's going on. Make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing to, from the mostly on the kitchen side. Uh, I made assumptions that my general manager was handling it very well in the front of the house. Then after that incident, I started spending actual a couple of shifts as hosting on the door on Friday and Saturday nights, working from four until about 10, 11 o'clock at night, a couple nights a week. And now after the uh, last incident, I just I work uh, I, do, I pull three manager shifts um, and then a two um, two hostess shifts. And then I also come in and out throughout the day. So basically, I'm, a, I'm there seven days a week. I'm just five of the days, I'm just pulling at least eight to 10 hour shifts. Okay. Um, a few other questions, unless any of my colleagues, I don't want to. Um, since it seems like you're going to be there more, um, I was concerned that I heard you now have changed your attitude and culture regarding um, alcohol service of it, not just the carding, but um, concerning food. It's this board's. Um, directive that once that second drink is in, food has to be ordered. Correct. Um, and you're saying now that you now are putting that policy in place. No, the policy has always been in place. The new policy is to put a menu in front of people before they even order the drink now. Okay. It's always been that you had no choice. But the second, um, that's the reason why we have appetizers that are fairly reasonable in price, so that by the time you order the second drink, you have to order a food item. Okay, um, well I would say that there was a big ga gap in that um, policy that you have because this individual, according to the video records, had ordered a second drink and had not ordered any food yet. Um, who do you hold responsible for um, this second incident not following that policy after the first hearing where you said you were going to take all the guidelines very seriously and make sure they are instituted? Right. <coughs> the bartender, he failed on all levels. Okay. And, 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 you know, once it's brought to the manager's attention, by that time the gentleman's already trying to leave, it's too late. He, he doesn't know anything else is going on. He, the bartender's attention, I mean, two drinks minimum before you had to order uh, an item of food. Menus were placed in front of the guy in the beginning, and you don't know how many person, how many drinks are gonna have. When they get to order the second drink, you, say, you have to order food if you're gonna continue on. So that would be Mr. Holt, when you yes. said the bartender, who is still, he has the same position he had before. He's, he's not there anymore. Oh, he's not there, Mr. Holt, Mr. Ken Zeiger, that's what I was thinking of, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, the other questions I have, um, which Mr. Kiro um, sort of touched on before, is that um, regarding the outdoor seating and the like, um, I must tell you, probably two, three weeks before this particular incident happened, um, uh, I had been getting calls from different citizens and the like, because you are in a, in a central location, you're near a high school and, a, and an elementary school, as well as it's, it's downtown center 
and I did not see this with my own eyes, but I got calls from people because of my family circumstances, I couldn't come down, that um, it appeared, and this is secondhand, um, but I'm gonna do my best next time I get a call to get down there, that there was a particularly, I think there were two very warm days in uh, March or something, end of March, early April, where the outdoor seating by most establishments was utilized, which it should be. That's one of the things that you know people like and are attractive in Arlington. And I just got anecdotally that of the six tables on this particular afternoon, um, I, and I got three different calls from three different sort of people in terms of, I'm not gonna identify them, who said you know of the six, they only saw one that had food, and they were calling because they were concerned it looked like um, the, the outdoor seating was turning into sort of what you're having happen in the bar outside. Um, I'd like to know what it is your uh, policy is for the outdoor seating. Um, who's received that training and, and how do you sort of manage that to make sure it's actually happening because you've had two breakdowns already inside. It's exactly the same as inside. If someone comes in to have something to eat and then they're having to finish off the glass of wine, we clear the plates, they're still having a glass of wine in front of them after they've eaten. I mean, I don't know what else to say. I mean, it's the same as the inside. Two drink minimum, then you have to have something to eat. No excuses. I mean, I mean, how many times have you had something to eat and then you had a glass of wine afterwards and then all your plates are clear? You know, you know, I can't just take your glasses away or throw something else in front of you. It's, you know, just handling it the way it's supposed to be done according to your policies. And I'm only kind of picking away at this because from the last hearing, I, I really didn't get that for myself personally, that to the level of seriousness that I felt you should take this, that you were not. Um, as well as you're even saying here tonight, people made assumptions and how can you make sure people order food? I'm not hearing like other um, restaurant establishments and you know, I don't own a restaurant but I'm very familiar with you know, um, restaurants from my family. Um, they have a very um, hard and fast rule. I mean, I've been a waitress myself. You know when people are ordering a second drink, you say, I'm sorry, you have to put your food order in now. I'm not hearing anything like that. Right, it's, it's a two drink minimum, then food. Am I correct? That's the rule. With the second drink, you order food. Right, when you order the second drink, you, be, before you can have the third one, you gotta have something to eat. That's the rule. Right. Right, so. I know my rule. I'm asking, no, you, I'm, that's I'm what asking I'm getting, you what you're doing. I'm hearing your assume. Exact, exact same thing. It's two drink minimum, and if you wanna order something else, you have to have something to eat, no matter what. Um, that's, that's your rules, we stand by it. We take it very seriously. We're not disputing anything. We're 100%, we own up to what we did wrong, and we 100%, we follow your rules. I mean, and I, people pay the price for it. And the rest of our staff and us, we're paying the price for it, so. And regardless of, um, I apologize, did I cut you off? No, no, I just Re Regardless of any um, penalty, fine, or whatever that may be imposed here tonight, can I get a commitment, which we've been asking since last July, and if you suggest that that didn't happen, I'm gonna be extremely insulted because I know I've had conversations with Mrs. Kropelka, who's related to um, the, the Board of Health and others about um, uh, conforming with the outdoor seating requirements, which means getting rid of those Guinness umbrellas. Yeah, I, 100%, I told you I'd do it tonight. I'll go in there and throw them away. Okay. Oh, they're gone. Okay, so, <laughs> they're gonna make sure I do it too. So uh, I guess we could say by, uh, the end of business Wednesday, they should Tonight. be down. Tonight. If for some reason you encounter a situation that they can't, could you notify the select? No, they're going to be gone tonight. But if, would you agree to that if for some reason? Well, I'm saying I guarantee they'll be done tonight. Okay, but if for some reason they're not, will you notify the Board of Selectmen's office? They're going to be done tonight. Yes. yes. Is that a yes or yes. no? Yes, yes, yes. So if for some reason they're not done by the end of business on Wednesday, you'll notify the Board of Selectmen's will, office yes. with an explanation. Yes. Okay. Um, and now your increased hours down at, at Common Ground, um, particularly around, I'm just concerned around with the outdoor seating um, hours, as well as what I consider sort of the uh, uh, peak nights, which are, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, what parts of those sh shifts are you actually there now? I'm there Friday and Saturday night all night. Uh, Thursday, I'm there during the day all the way up until like five. And who is the- uh, I'm the there all night too. Okay, and who is the um, general manager currently on Thursday nights? Is it still Mr. Kainzinger? Yeah. And now yeah. I'm on the weekends. And you're on the weekends. Okay, um, any, Mr. Carroll? Um, yeah, this might be a minor thing, but I'm just <clears throat> curious because there seems to be a discrepancy. Um, 
some of the, the testimony of the bartender was that it was a very busy night on, on, on that night, although it sounds like it was not a very busy night from the tapes. Was there an event going on in the back room? No, I don't think time? it was busy at all. It was not. Oh. Okay. That's why we're, we're, I'm, I was, I was befuddled by the whole fact, uh, how it happened. That's, okay. Was, mm -hmm. sure Thank you. Has there been any retraining or uh, <clears throat> further education? Everybody's Mr. been, every, all new handbooks have been handed out again, re-signed again, safe serve. Everybody's been retrained on all, uh, all aspects of it. And again, we still go through every night uh, pre-mill. Okay, um, the first part of my question would be concerning Mr. Keisinger, um, who is still one of your general managers and who um, was involved with this incident. What um, steps were taken to re-educate him or provide him with further education? He and had, by whom? He had to retake the classes again, safe serve. He was suspended for two weeks without pay. And, and basically, he was, he's been stepped down a level. Um, he still represents as a general manager, but he's actually been drawn back. And Liz has been taken over, and I've been taken over, and we're hiring a new manager as well. So he's been uh, brought down a couple levels. And besides um, retraining and re-educating and passing out those handbooks again, have you done anything beyond that? Because I know, again, working in um, the food service industry, you work for different owners and establishments and working for the ABCC for over 20 years myself um, as a court reporter. I'm not a commissioner. Oh, I was say, well, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? You don't mess with a court reporter either. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes they know more than others. I, I know that certain establishments, sometimes when they went through this, they'd say, oh, yes, we retrained everyone. We gave them a copy of the handbook and had them sign it, and that was it. No. And, but that's what I'm hearing right now. If you, could you tell me an uh, individual called, you know, three different shift meetings, uh, had an approximately 15, 30 minute training on whatever and whatever it is to get rid of the assumptions that your general manager made as well as whatever difficulties people have with making sh sure food gets on that table after the second drink. Can May I? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I you so said. just to let you know, I, I mean my number one thing in this, uh, in this establishment is obviously it's just being on the floor and that's Bob and me that's why things have changed so much is that we're on the floor so while I absolutely understand serve safe but remember Eugene was serve safe he's been doing this 20 years you know so that's and ta and saying like this is how we do it this is how we do it meetings are not always effective what I have found to be very effective is just monitoring like if I know I know what's going on in the restaurant almost all the time. I know it sounds crazy, but if 501, I'm looking and I'm seeing, if I'm aware, I know they've had two drinks or I'm going up to the computer and I'm seeing two drinks. So I'm immediately going up to one of my servers in Manish and saying, where's the food menu, what's going on? So I hear what you're saying, you need, you need more training, you need that, but you also just need to be active and like on it and take it very seriously. And obviously that's important. So. That's where I feel we are and Bob will tell you the same thing. Bob has no problem walking in the middle of the restaurant being like, did your card 401? I'm like, not everyone had to hear that, Bob. So I promise you, like, things are changing. Things are totally different and I, I get it, I do. And you understand where I'm a little bit Absolutely. hesitant because you had a very serious incident on New Year's Eve by 100%. someone that uh, what we heard from the testimony was a, a very, um, uh, cherished and well known to s some employees and uh, well loved in his picture I'm told is still hanging somewhere yes. in there yes. and I would have thought after that incident and especially being an owner and propri proprietor that um, again I know working for for different um, uh, individuals in the food industry that um, you see how owners sort of respond to an incident um, I would think after that incident um, everything that you said before you are not here, um, Ms. Marsden, um, but Mr. O'Gwen and Attorney Leone was. We were told all the same things, and we're going to stay on top of it, and we've learned from this, and you know the hot strings were plugged in terms of this individual, unfortunately, um, and his family, the loss they suffered, as well as Attorney Leone cited, you know, some of his own personal um, feelings and experiences, which you know I didn't really take into account either way because I just don't think that's appropriate. Um, so I'm kind of hearing, you know, same old song again. Um, so I, I just want to say, you know, respectfully, th that's the reason why. And even with the thing with the, with the, you know, outdoor seating with the Guinness, I know I've been on that for a long time, and I know I bugged Mrs. Kropelka. And to me, if you let a little thing like that, which is so, as, as Mr. O'Quinn said, that 
babies down tonight, and it yeah. probably will be. I, I just wanted to get the court reporter me on the record to say, okay. if for some reason you didn't do it, but to me, if you, you're even slighting something like that, but then you're saying, please t take us, take my veracity, my truthfulness, that on this more serious stuff, where we've, we've had two major um, lapses and violations, um, but now we're gonna get it right. So that, that's sort of where some of my, you know, questioning in terms of what I'm hearing from the microphone comes from. Just one other thing, I mean, I thought we had got it right to, after that first incident, and then that's the reason why we end up cleaning the house with all the uh, managers, that, and we, we're changing up the whole procedure, because I thought we did it right the first time, mm -hmm. and apparently we didn't, but this time now, we were on top of it. I were out there, like she said, monitoring, it's like hall monitoring, you're there all the time, and just watching all the tables, more so, and we just changed it, it's the style of management that came in. So, and I thought I got it right the first time, but apparently mm -hmm. we didn't, uh, on, the, uh, on being, very adamant on doing what we're supposed to do. So, okay, again, we'll probably I get to, to the second part, but I just wanted one last thing. I know after the uh, last hearing, and I dissented, and I did my thing where I say, swear to God in the Bible, they're going to be back before us. They're going to violate by summertime. And then um, when it happened, uh, a couple of my colleagues said, Can you believe this happened? I said, Yes, I can. And so, just from me to you, uh, in terms of the fact that um, I believe if the current practices that I believe to be happening um, concerning your outdoor seating and um, alcohol and food or lack thereof being served or not served, if that isn't really re-examined and uh, you re-implement um, some other standards out there, I, I think you'll be back before us again if, you know, if you, irregardless of whatever punishment may come forward, I, I think I can pretty much guarantee it. I say it with the same, um, uh, strength that I had when I assumed you, I really thought you were gonna reoffend in the summer because I had been hearing about, you know, outdoor seating and, and things like that. So I would just say, word of advice, I'm not telling you it's anything you have to do, but I think if, um, if I was advising you as a friend or a co-owner, I'd say I think you really should take a look at um, the outdoor seating, the policies out there, and just make sure everybody's really clear, and especially because you're right in Arlington Center, and I've had people who aren't really looking for nitpicky things, you know, for a person like that to call me. Um, and, I, and I am going to, you know, talk with the town manager and find out what's appropriate. I haven't gone down when I've gotten the phone calls because I don't know that that's necessarily appropriate. But um, I just want to bring it to your attention. I haven't seen it myself personally, so I'm not saying, you know, it happened because I didn't see it. You know, it's all hearsay, but I'm telling you the same reason I guaranteed you'd be in before. <laughs> I said the summer. I didn't think it would be even sooner than that, and you were. I'm just telling you on that. You know. You're welcome down anytime. <laughs> oh, no, thank you. No, <laughs> thank you. I just want to say the reason we brought Ms. Martin in is so that it wasn't just Bob saying how the culture has changed and how they're changing. Is that the actual other floor managers, the new managers who are running, helping him run the place, are able to testify as to what's the change of atmosphere and the change of supervision of the staff at this point, as opposed to when we were here last. That's why we, we brought Liz along this evening. Okay, and if you could, if you, when you have a chance in the next day or two, if you could just call Mrs. Kropalka at the Selectman's office and just provide her, um, I think you said you're there Friday, Saturday nights and something else. So um, I don't yeah. want to come down, pop in a time that you're not there. That would be unfair. Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Tuesday day, Thursday day, Sunday afternoon. Okay, Mr. Carroll. Uh, Madam Chair, um, not this Friday. Though. Our policies, um, mm -hmm. you know, dictate a guideline of uh, three to five days suspension for a first offense on, a, on an um, underage service, um, <clears throat> and so I, I, I feel pretty comfortable at this point moving that we suspend the license for five days, uh, said suspension to commence within a month after the completion of any other. Um, uh, suspensions which may be triggered by this by this uh, violation um, <clears throat> just just put that in layman's terms we, we know that we have um, there was a, a um, <clears throat> fairly hefty sanction was was uh, placed down but placed in abeyance uh, for the the other incident which was not related to underage serving uh, of two weeks and that uh, any incident um, automatically triggered that as far as I'm concerned there's no discussion here about about that, that's triggered. That that was already the board's decision, and um, understanding that was by mutual um, 
after long mutual discussions. Um, so that has triggered. Um, I, <clears throat> I feel that we should commence uh, the, the uh, penalty that's specifically associated with this violation within a month and after the, the completion of that. O otherwise, we're actually, in effect, we're putting down a 19-day a, uh, um, a consecutive mm -hmm. penalty, and I, I, which seems rather, rather long. By the same token, I know that this board, you know, since I've been here for um, <clears throat> violations of service to minors, we've tended to err on the, the, the low side with three days for uh, our compliance checks where uh, there's been a good faith effort shown to to um, to uh, comply with our laws, I, I feel like this um, that this rises to another level where we really have to exercise the discretion under that policy on the on the uh, um, the greater side. Um, I haven't been here for a um, uh, a violation uh, hearing uh, for service to minors where. You know, the, the chief felt that it was uh, serious enough to, to, to come himself. Um, you know, uh, certainly your officers have represented the department well, but, but to, to, to um, express his concerns with uh, a pattern um, at an establishment. Um, and uh, I, I think that we have to take this very seriously. So that, that's my motion, but I'm, I'm, I'm open to discussion. So your motion is, first and foremost, we have the automatic two-week suspension. Um, which was voted at the last infraction, and you now have put on the table an additional three an to additional five, five days. An additional five days um, uh, within the next to be To be commenced within a month after the completion of any other. So, so in other words, we know they're going to have a two-week suspension that's triggered mm -hmm. by this. Mm -hmm. Within a month after that's completed, the five-day suspension begins. Okay. And as our policy states, on the same day of the week. The, the I was going to ask that. So it would be commencing on a Thursday. And I, I see the chief as I hope I didn't put words in your mouth. Thank you. uh, just uh, if I may, Madam Chair, before you begin your deliberations, I was concerned about a statement made by Council Leone that they shot themselves in the foot by calling the police. I'm really concerned moving forward. Uh, you know, our priority at, at any disturbance call at a licensed establishment is public safety and make sure people get EMS and the services that they, that they need. Um, I'm very concerned that there be some hesitation on the part of this staff should there be an incident moving forward to access police services and to the extent through the chair that you could admonish this license holder that that would be completely unacceptable uh, to me as the chief of police I'd appreciate that thank you chief I'd just like to say we will always make sure the safety of our patrons are first no matter what mm -hmm. we will even if you feel like you're probably going to shoot yourself in the foot again, mm -hmm. which is probably a poor choice. Listen, I've done it multiple times, uh, uh, but it's for the safety. I, I'd rather see someone safe and secure and me get punished for it if I made a mistake. That's just my mistake. I'm the one that got to live up to my own mistakes. I understand. Okay. So the initial hesitancy, I, I kind of heard sort of remorse for, you know, we kind of did the right thing and uh, we shot ourselves in the foot. Um, no, it, you're going to be able to change that culture of thinking in terms of anything in the future? It wasn't a hesitancy. It was they didn't hesitate to call. What I'm saying with their actions, even though knowing that something in the future will harm them, they still intend to call. We didn't, didn't mean to say at, at all, Chief, or any of the board members, that mm -hmm. they're going to hesitate to call the police if there's a necessity to do so. Even I'm just saying, incident. you know what, maybe go back and review this tape because the statement was made that, I, you know, I, we kind of shot ourselves in the foot. I, I know what I said, but I didn't, but, but mean, I'm just it, saying. I didn't mean it to mean they're not going to take seriousness of someone who's in need of the police services, their need of police, or if they see something else, mm -hmm. they're, as Bob just said, it, it's the safety of the community and the safety of the individuals first, even if it harms his own restaurant. But I think, Mr. O'Quinn, you understand the chief and the board's concern regarding oh, that. I, yeah. 100 percent, but I, I, like I always tell my managers, I go, even if you think you did wrong, I don't want to see it because I got cameras. I will find out myself. I go, it's always about the safety of the patrons, it's always. Okay. Uh, Mr. Greeley, did you have your hand up? Uh, there's a motion by Mr. Carroll. Is there a second for discussion? Was it seconded? Not yet. Second. Seconded by Mr. Dunn. Yeah. Mr. Greeley? Yes. Um, I don't want to see this restaurant close. Uh, but I want to see them conform uh, better. Uh, I would, I, I believe uh, Ms. Mars Marston and Mr. O'Gwynn, um, 
this has woken them up. I'm sorry it took two incidents to wake them up. Um, I don't believe we're going to see them here again, uh, Madam Chair, God willing. Um, uh, so I would be personally, I would like to amend Mr. Kuro's motion that the five-day suspension he recommends may be served concurrently with the 14-day suspension um, um, uh, at the same time. Concurrent, am I saying that right? Concurrently, yes. right. Sure. Uh, but I would further add that if there is any further violation, we will pull the license, period. So I don't know whether anybody wants to second that amendment or... <clears throat> Bueller, Bueller, anybody? <laughs> no, well, I'm. Yep. Uh, Mr. Dunn? Um, I, I will I'm going to second it for the point, purpose of discussion. Okay. Um, any comments regarding our discussion regarding um, either Mr. Kiro's motion or Mr. Greeley's motion? Mr. Dunn? Um, I definitely understand Mr. Greeley's proposal, and it has. Uh, I look at it and I say uh, that I, I look at what's, what's happened and I look at it and I say uh, that it's very hard for me sitting here to tell the difference between the two incidents, uh, like in terms of what the reaction is. And uh, I mean, I, I, I understand that we have we brought Ms. Marsden, but at the same time, you know, who knows what's actually going to happen and what will happen and what did happen. All that you can really look at is like we don't have a great lens into you know your the, into the restaurants day to day. So the nice thing about Mr. Greeley's motion is that it does uh, have a it has a it, it it even further increases the risks that the establishment would be under if it were to go forward to that, and they would uh, you know be playing with fire indeed if they weren't um, being very very uh, it would be perfectly careful, frankly. But at the same time, um, I I. I'm not, I'm not going to, I don't think, uh, unless there's a, lo a, a large sentiment here to support it, um, I'd rather uh, go with uh, the direction that Mr. Greeley, uh, Mr. Kerr is going. I would um, I would support if you, the, there was an amendment instead to make it three days on the first because we did the, that. Uh, to, uh, so even with, and I also understand why you're after five. And I, so I can, so I guess what I'm saying is that I could support Mr. Kerr's motion. I could support Mr. Greeley's though. I won't, but in the end, I will get there. Uh, but I could also get to a three in the off the bat. I'm not making a motion. Mr. Byrne. Um, I, I think I'm aligned with um, Mr. Dunn's sentiment um, here. I, I'm not quite ready to, I, I don't want, I, I'd like to review any and all facts before actually pulling someone's license at a, at a future meeting. Um, so I don't want to have that stipulation involved um, right now. Um, and I, I do think that I would be more aligned with going three days instead of five um, due to the fact that there's already a 14-day penalty and that, you know, that, we, uh, that we agreed upon and I understand that that is, um, you know, there are no ifs, ands, or buts there. Um, but I think that, you know, 17 days um, is a, you know, I think that's a sufficient penalty. Um, I'm, I'm uh, amenable to the three days, but not concurrently, um, versus the five. I, I'm thinking of other hearings that we've had. I, I know there were some, just the TIPS program where nobody died and um, the police weren't called in to um, respond to uh, someone who was an underage drinker, um, having been served two alcohol drinks. It's when we do the typical um, send in the underage kids with the $20 bills that are marked and everything like that. And I know we had two establishments that I think by large it was a language barrier and we came right down on them five days right away. Um, yeah. and, uh, and because they didn't come in similar to a very well established, in my opinion, yeah. uh, chain here in Arlington who pu pulled out books and binders and all these things that they've had and they've had focus groups and charrettes and this and that, well, they had the same violation. And so um, that's why uh, I, I wouldn't go for the concurrent. Mr. Dunn? I will point out that in that situation, we did change our mind and we went to three. I know because I brought it back up because I thought it was vastly unfair and I wasn't here that night but I always watched the selectmen's meetings from home 
good and to, I was it's screaming good to know at my all, TV. <laughs> it's good to know that we agree on what the end result was. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So, um, Mr. Carroll, would you, uh, uh, since you left it three to five days, uh, the initial automatic. I didn't, say, I didn't leave it three to five days. I said five, but said five. I'm hearing the sentiment of the board, and I, I am willing to, to, uh, to move that to three with the other stipulations as I put out there. But I'm not in, uh, in favor of the other tenant of Mr. Grayley, no, with all due respect, the um, concurrent feature of it. Mr. Grayley? Oh, but uh, I hear, you know, that clearly the four of you. But uh, so I'm curious how the first 14 days work. I understand you're saying you've amended the three. The three days have to be done within a month after the 14 have been served. Yeah. By when do the 14 have to be served? I don't know if we stipulated that in our in Within our the decision. next 30 days. Mr. Heim? We didn't stipulate with specificity in uh, the decision. So I think the board has considerable latitude. Mm -hmm. It's up to the board to decide you know, how it wants to impose that. Are they, is it 14 contiguous? Yes, two weeks. That's okay. what it was. Okay, uh, I'm just asking. I thought it was yeah. too late. Um, so I think we need to stipulate when that needs to be served by. Um, and then the three days has to be done within a month of that. At the risk of making this incredibly complicated, and I really don't want to go. I don't really want to go there. But 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 picking up on on part of what Mr. Greeley, um, the idea he floated of, of concurrency, I'm wondering if this board would be amenable to having to, to sticking with the five days that I, I put out with two of them served concurrently. So that we're at least on record as having voted for a, a, a stricter penalty in this case, but we've taken into account the, the, some of the potential impacts and, and that there is a trigger which was, was put in place um, as a result of the, the, um, the, the first incident. So the effect is still yeah. it's 14 days. 14 days plus and an it's additional three, but if we're on the record the as. Two is as as, as recognizing that there is a degree of, of more seriousness. Because remember, the 14 days is, is a sanction for that first incident. It's not a sanction for this. It's just triggered by this. So the only way that we can signal the, the, the seriousness with, with which we take this specific incident is, is through the, the um, it's somewhat symbolic, I recognize. Mm -hmm. okay. And it's somewhat messy also, I recognize. I don't know that you're what you I can't discern any difference between what you said and what Mr. Greeley's proposal was. May, may I? Yeah. I think what Mr. Curo is proposing is that you would issue a five day license suspension for this violation and that two of those days shall run concurrent Correct. with 14 the fourteen day suspension, uh -oh. which is essentially a violation of probation terms. Correct. So that would be a total of seventeen days actual served, but two days would have right. symbolically, as Mr. Kiro suggested. So the actual impact on, on the establishment is still the 14 plus, plus three. Five. No, no, but, yeah. but, but for the record, the pen, yeah. we, we have recognized the, the, the relative seriousness of, of the impact. I know. Mm. But, um, if, if, um, sorry, can I? Oh, sorry. Yeah, if, um, yeah, I mean, if I, I really, like, I, I I understand the symbolism, but I, I mean, if it, if it makes you feel better, I, I will support it. But I really don't see it as being necessary. Okay. Um, so um, the only other point we have to determine whether it's Mr. Uh, Greeley's motion or Mr. Kiro's motion is um, amended fourteen plus five, but two concurrent, Mr. Dunn. Uh, I'm going to recommend for, uh, that, uh, without uh, feeling passionately about it, that we say to start within four or within four weeks of our finalizing our decision, because we're going to vote a decision tonight. Mr. Heim's going to write it up for us. We will then vote and finalize, and I'm going to say that the, the two week should start within four weeks of that date. That's my. Do you take that as a friendly amendment? Yep, I do. Within four weeks of our. Finally, voting and yeah. discussing, voting and approving this final decision. Okay. Is, uh, Attorney Hine, does that comport with? Um, yes, Madam Chairman. In terms of when this will begin. So uh, my understanding is that from the date of uh, 
not, not the board's decision tonight, but the date of the formal written decision. Uh, within 14 weeks, the establishment shall, I'm sorry, 14 Four. weeks. <laughs> Four weeks, the establishment shall serve its initial 14 day suspension. Shall start. Shall start its initial 14 day suspension. And that within 30 days of that suspension being completed, that a three day suspension uh, shall be served. And that my understanding from the board is that all of the suspensions are to run, um, sorry, uh, contiguous. Consecutive, essentially, consecutive, 14 consecutive days, then 30 days, and then three consecutive days after that. Yes, I understand. Okay. Um, Mr. Greeley, is your motion still on the table? Uh, four to one, no. I, 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 I mean, I still believe in it, but I'm not going to get anywhere, so. <laughs> so it's Mr. Carroll's motion. I won't we call vote for, on for first, a vote right? on that. And uh, before I call for a vote, I will say, um, which will not be part of this decision. Um, but I, I share Mr. Greeley's sentiments, if I'm um, interpreting them correctly. A third event similar of this nature, um, I would be looking at revocation, but hopefully that doesn't happen. Uh, Mr. Dunn? I, thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Gwynn, I really appreciate what you said um, about the safety being the most important, because I absolutely agree that's true. And uh, I had been planning on bringing it up at this particular point in the, in the the chief got there before I did. Uh, it's my experience, uh, my, uh, one of my other lives is I'm uh, really involved in my fraternity. And so we have underage people there and there has been times when there's underage drinking and sometimes things that led to unsafe things. And uh, our lesson to the, or we, said, we tell them is that they absolutely have to keep safety first. And I really am very glad to hear you say that. Okay, um, any final comments? When to next, when will the final um, decision be made. I'll have it ready for the board's next meeting. June twentieth. June twentieth meeting. Mm -hmm. So it'd be thirty days after June twentieth. It has to start. Within four weeks. Could he do it the first two weeks of August, so we can plan with schedules for his vac some for his vacations and schedule the employees to have that time off. Would you do all seventeen days in a row? We'll do all seventeen days. In a row. For 17 days of August, um, I'm, I'm personally I'm willing to say that, and so which is to say that I would propose that we amend first two weeks the start date to be uh, within six weeks of our written decision. Second. Thank you. Appreciate it. And I floated my variation. I wasn't feeling a lot of a lot of love or traction for that, so I guess we should just keep it clean, and I'm, I'm fine with the three day. Three-day suspension mm -hmm. would, would be uh, as stipulated here. I guess um, I, I'll begrudgingly go along with that um, for the sake of your employees. Um, I really do hope you take this seriously. I know, you know, all the right things to say, um, you know, but your actions will speak louder than words and. Perhaps you can utilize some of that time in terms of really going over your staff. I don't know. I can't advise you on who should be your general manager. And, um, but if you have a manager who assumes and, uh, and some of the other things that we heard, um, that's for you to sort of decide how that goes. But um, to me, a wake-up call would be you really, uh, and I'm, I'm pro work, union, everything. I don't want to see anybody lose their job. But if you have somebody in a position that perhaps they're not uh, at this point sort of competent or uh, able to perform that for whatever reason, you know, sometimes it's a personality that inside they know I should do this, but you know, for whatever particular reason, um, per whatever. I won't go into it. So, but I'll let you reevaluate that. But I would just make sure that you know. Your managers and um, Ms. Marston looks like she means business over there. So <laughs> um, I'm, I don't know if I want to tick her off right away, but we'll see. Um, so I will go along with that. I uh, uh, I do feel like we're sort of uh, giving you some latitude in terms of uh, softening the blow. But um, where I fall down on agreeing with that, I, I feel the large hit in this, um, besides the monetary, um, to the owner. Um, are the employees so um, yeah. that's the one thing that that sw would sway me to agree to this because I really w would like to throw the book at you really really hard three times but okay so um, 
as amended on a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Dunn. Mr. Attorney Heim, you have everything from us that you need? So I want to just make sure that I understand uh, the motion correctly. The motion is that within uh, six weeks of the final written decision, which should align with the schedule as discussed by uh, Council Leone, uh, the two weeks uh, suspension shall be served uh, consecutive days. Uh, it's my understanding that the uh, uh, license holder intends to serve all 17 yep. days but um, consecutively, but that the board's motion is still to serve within 30 days of uh, the completion of the 14 days. So that flexibility will be, as I understand the motion now, the flexibility will be there if something changes, but it's my understanding that the license holder intends to serve them all consecutively. Yeah. If that accurately reflects the board's understanding, then yes. okay. I'm ready for the to record your vote. And you're lucky Arlington goes away for the summer, so. <laughs> um, on a motion by Mr. Kiro, as amended by various of my colleagues, seconded by Mr. Dunn, Mr. I, I, I'm curious, so I'm just wondering, you're gonna close down for yep. 17 days? Yep. Okay. You cut costs, and employees lose, and yeah. everybody loses, so. Okay. Thank you. And this gives more lead time. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Guinness. Yes, Thank, right you. Now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hope we don't see you on this again. Yes, hopefully. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Inspector. Apologize. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Inspector. Thank you for. We will now go to appointments. Agenda item 10 Arlington Cultural Council. Gabrielle Marog. Is Gabrielle here? Was she coming tonight? She was. She was. Um, do you want to move approval pending her appearing? So moved. moved. Moved by Mr. Grayley, seconded by oh, Mr. Dunn, by Mr. Kiro. Did you have a comment, Mr. Dunn? Um, there have been unusual occasions where we felt like approving someone who wasn't here. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in a couple of recent meetings, we've moved it to being a little bit more customary. And I would actually rather wait till they're here. OK. Is that I all right? I'll do that. OK. I'll I work. would draw. I'll work with Mrs. If Kiro. there's a specific reason, right. you know, and there's an event that, like, you know, right. we need them on the board, but they can't be here that night, fine, let's that do it. Sense. But. Okay, motion by Mr. Dunn to table, seconded by? Second. Mr. Byrne, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Oh, perhaps she was here and then saw an hour oh, and a half no. long oh. hearing. Is that how yes. long we were? Oh, Lord. Uh, I should understand. Item 11, under licenses and permits, uh, request for a few food vendor license at 1215 Mass Ave La Familia Pizzeria, Osmali Bento Lombardi. Mr. Lombardi, or his representative here? Hiya. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for uh, your patience. Lincoln Bento. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, Osmali's husband. And with the board's permission, I'll speak for her because uh, she believes her English isn't oh. appropriate <laughs> to be standing here. Okay? She can bring her, bring her up anyway. Yeah, bring her, yes. up. Is, is her English good when she's yelling at you? Yeah, <laughs> I think it's fine. But, yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I want to start off with, I uh, don't live in Arlington now, but I've lived in Arlington 40 years. Went to Heidi School, Junior High East, which I heard was opening up again. Yep, mm -hmm. yeah. the Gibbs. And Hopefully Arlington June High, 14th. All three of my children went through the Arlington School System. And I am ecstatic for the opportunity to open a business in the town. And um, basically, we want to rejuvenate that corner. And I, I know the people that, I don't know them personally, but I've eaten them many times. And uh, I know some of you may think another pizza joint in Arlington. But that's where you can go to 15 pizza joints and have 15 different pizzas. So I think that's where choice comes in. And uh, I'm sure everyone's thankful that we have that freedom of choice. And let the best pizza win, that's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Grilly. Uh, move approval subject to all conditions as set forth. Exactly. But, you know, the best way for me to test your pizza. Okay. Is I say, here comes the samples. <laughs> Are there any samples here this evening? No, no, unfortunately not. We well, don't have our oven yet. The oven's still <laughs> coming. I still want you to get this license. Thanks for coming back to Arlington to do this. Thank you. Mr. Byrne. Um, I, I just want to say I'm really happy that someone's utilizing that corner again. Um, no, it's very welcome, so thank you. Great. Mr. Dunn. I'm curious, what's your role in the restaurant? Uh, business manager. Okay. Uh, thank you for coming. Thank you. And I'm just the housekeeping nit. Um, in your application, you have Sunday through Thursday, 11A to 10P, Friday, Saturday, 11A to 11P. But on your menu and your brochures, you have open seven days a week, 
11 a to 11 P oh, which it's up to you yeah. is yeah, it it's... is it the original closing at 10 Sunday or do you want to stay open to 11 all seven days um, the way you have it in your application you're closing at 10 okay. Sunday through Thursday but the way you have it in all your other stuff your menu and all that it's seven days a week 11 to 11 okay. it's your call right just, 11 to 11 is if that's is what you want so can we make that change administratively so on your application it'll just say Sunday through Saturday 11 a to 11 P great I'm not being a stickler. It's just, right. you know. it, for insurance purposes, it's good. You know, you want to have that clarified. On a motion by Mr. Grilly, seconded by Mr. Kiro. Any further co questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Great. Good Thank luck. you. Good Thank luck. You so much. Thank you for waiting. You know, it's funny. I've, I've always watched this <laughs> on cable for years. You know, and I always thought it was bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But have you noticed that I'm actually thinner than I appear on cable? Uh. <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. I, I move to reconsider. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, agenda item 12, a request for a sidewalk cafe permit at 138 Mass Ave, Za Restaurant. Jeff Broden, General Manager. Thank you for your patience. Of course. Um, Fire away, buddy. Any <coughs> brief uh, synopsis of what it is you're requesting? Or I mean, we have all the materials before us, but we're for requesting people watching uh, at home to uh, to put uh, five tables outside of our restaurant at 138 Mass Ave uh, and take advantage of uh, the renovation to the uh, the avenue over in East Arlington in the Capitol Square, and um, you know, open up the outdoors to uh, you know to our patrons. Move approval. Moved by Mr. Second. Burns, seconded by Mr. Greeley. Mr. Dunn. Can we attach a condition that you never change the cucumber salad? Yes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just have a question. Um, East Arlington Mass Ave redesign, we're reaping all the benefits from it. I would say the, the sort of only one downfall, if I wanted to call it that, would be um, because of various plantings and, and uh, and I'm in favor of this, not in, not in favor of it, but uh, in terms of handicap accessibility, as well as um, I noticed, and I'm going to drive by again, not your establishment, because you haven't started yet, but I noticed um, uh, a couple of the outdoor cafes that when I went down, because I had received calls, um, if I was in a wheelchair or pushing a stroller, I would not be able to get through there. So my question to you would be, upon approval by this board, um, what steps would you take, implement, in terms of educating your employees um, and or well, your staff that uh, sets up the outdoor seating to ensure that, is it 36 inches? Uh, the, the handicap accessibility. I think, it's 40, I think it's 42 inches. 42 inches that that's not infringed upon. Are you going to have markings? Like, how are you going to make sure they know that? Because so the I've already seen some restaurants that we just previously okay and I'm gonna to have to follow up well we're we're planning to put the tables near the wall abutting the wall the front wall of our restaurant and the cafe seating is going to come out eight feet from the wall and then 30 feet down and eight feet back mm -hmm. I think there's five and a half feet between the beginning of the curb and the cafe seating mm -hmm. which I believe is is more than adequate but, you know, I mean, if, if there are lots of crowds and so forth, we will be out there and we will make sure that uh, traffic is, is, you know, right. the flow of traffic is maintained. Yeah. And, and I, I hope there's a lot of traffic. I hope there's a lot of crowds and all that. I'm, right. I'm just saying whatever you think is appropriate in okay. terms of I've never managed a restaurant with outdoor seating or managed a restaurant, but whatever you think is appropriate for that staff, whoever sets up that outdoor seating, even if it's a little note where they have to go and pick up all that stuff that says don't forget 42 inch handicap or whatever I don't know that that's the thing but I just wanted to impart that upon you sure thing and I will do that in the future for anybody else who comes before us as well as follow up on um, the other ones Mr. Grayley I, I just wanted to uh, point out uh, I was at um, Adam and my um, hair salon recently and Olivio's Olivio's has the tables out and I was over there looking at them, and honestly, coincidentally, both a wheelchair and a woman with a baby carriage passed right. Now, there wasn't a crowd at the tables or anything, but just in terms of the way that one's been set up, uh, I was impressed. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, any further discussion? I questions on a motion? I have some by Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Greeley. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Next, we have Citizens Open Forum. Did anyone sign in, Mrs. Kropelka? We talked to him before him because we passed ah. it now. Okay. We oh. voted for it. Ah. We voted it. I can sign it now. Okay. okay. And who? Our colleague, Mr. Hurd. John Hurd, 38 Spy Pond Parkway. Um, I came up uh, to share with the board a few concerns, and then I thought of a couple more while I was here, but maybe uh, I heard it was going to be a short meeting. Oh, um, sorry. Oh, my God. No, that's all right. I have some correspondence. This is about two um, traffic issues, right? what's new about that, but I, I tried to email them unsuccessfully to Ms. Kropelka, but if the board, uh, but I, my goal is to have these concerns referred to the TAC if possible. Uh, there's two in particular on Lake Street, uh, the bumper to bumper traffic in the morning and in the evening. On Lake Street in the evening, uh, there's one, I think, a major problem, as well as many of my neighbors in Cowan Manor. Uh, there's a new uh, route for many uh, vehicles that are trying to avoid the traffic. They, they take a left on Colonial Drive, mm -hmm. they take a right on Elliott, they, t they basically do a circle. They go back out onto Lake, yeah. down Wilson, down Mary. Uh, when I wrote it out today, I was actually almost chuckling. There were multiple turns. And, and again, it's in an effort to go through the neighborhood, down Mary Street, it's my understanding, in the afternoon, it's about 250 cars. There are neighbors that are counting them. Um, the turn onto Elliott Road in Kellen Manor, uh, is uh, about 200 cars, and it basically becomes a traffic jam on Elliott yeah. to take their turn to do their loop. Right. So, um, I mean, I think uh, obviously we'd like some direction from the TAC. I think making Wilson Road a do not enter at a specified time, four to, to uh, seven, would prevent that from happening. Um, the other issue, uh, sure. Well, I was, sorry, I was just trying to get in line. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> See how I'm following the rules. Um, the other issue uh, that I'd like, to, I'd like to bring before the board uh, is in the morning. Very similar issue. Um, I go up Lake Street every morning. I see the town manager w looking over East Arlington uh, when he's walking out there. Uh, and uh, same thing, they're taking a right on Wilson, heading uh, I think rather quickly down Mary Street, down, left on Margaret, back out onto Lake. And, um, and all it's doing is compounding the situation by people that uh, don't want to be courteous and wait like everybody else. So um, that's the other issue that I would like to refer to the TAC for their deliberation and, and to bring back to the board. And I would certainly participate in that discussion with some of the neighbors. And, um, it's really, uh, as you know, it's bumper to bumper down there. Uh, you just have to wait and uh, be patient. And it's not fair that people aren't willing to do that. And more importantly, uh, it's unsafe. They come around the corner onto Elliott uh, very quickly. They're very impatient. There was actually an accident down there a couple of weeks ago. I think someone was backing out and actually hit a car. Um, so that's what I want. I, I wrote up quickly this after. So. Maybe there's a couple of punctuation errors there, but uh, I saw the board was meeting, and uh, there's many neighbors that are concerned about it, and uh, mm -hmm. that's what I was concerned about. Mr. Byrne and then Mr. Chaplin. Um, I guess I have one, um, two questions. One, Mr. Uh, thank you for this. Um, what, now, how do you think the residents would feel about not being able to turn down those streets at that time as well? I mean, because we, you know, that. We they have to hear it on Lake Street. We're yeah. coming the other way. You know, we hear from some residents who don't like that change. The uh, the do not enter. Hmm. Uh, the do not enter would prevent the Mary uh, Street access. Um, but already, as you know, from four to seven, there's no right turn mm -hmm. uh, on the first three streets. I think up to Homestead. Yeah, so yeah. what would happen? Uh, some of those on Mary. Uh, may not like the fact that they have to go up to Homestead to backtrack back, but I, I tend to believe that they would be very pleased that 250 cars aren't coming by, I think, and that's a good question. It wouldn't be 
all the way up to Margaret, mm -hmm. it would be the first two. And after that, it becomes uh, inefficient to actually turn off and come back. Um, so that's sort of the thinking on that. And the tech may, you know, have another idea around that. And uh, same thing in the morning. Uh, you know, the signs are already up the floor to seven. Uh, basically, it'd be a matter of putting seven to nine, again, on the first three streets, uh, Wilson, Little John, and Homestead. Mm -hmm. And um, there's still two additional streets that neighbors or people that live there could turn up. And, uh, you know, so it's, uh, again, trying to keep them on lake and... Um, wait their turn. I wait their turn. It drives me nuts when I, I've seen that. And yep. then Elliot, I'm like, when did this happen? It's, it's, uh, it's amazing. I, in this, uh, I have some neighbors that are actually doing video for you folks if you if you'd like to see them. Because uh, now there's a traffic jam on Elliot just to do the loop. So it's, uh, it's a problem. I guess the only other question I, I would add being, uh, I know that there's a lot of history on this board. Has this ever gone before TAC before? Do you know? You know, we have a history of sending things to TAC several different times, and I want to know if they already have conducted any sort of study on this. Not that I know of. Uh, I think they're aware of it. Mm -hmm. um, you're talking about the Elliott Load, load yeah. Loop? Um, not sure. I think what's happened is more and more people become they start following the three cars in front of them. They say, okay. No, that's not we I'm still doing. have an issue in, I mean, I'm, I'm on Spy Pond Parkway. We still have the issue of them coming down Spy Pond Parkway, cutting back up, you know, um, on Pond View. Um, and I think internally in our neighborhood, we're working on some, you know, speed bumps and other um, mitigating uh, obstacles that we can think about. But um, that would be for another day. Mr. Chapdelaine and then Mr. Carroll. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. So a uh, couple thoughts. Uh, first, I, I believe that the, the most significant way that will help mitigate this problem is by putting in the, the, uh, the coordinated light at the bikeway intersection in Brooks Ave, which this board has already voted approval on moving forward. So we are working with TAC and to put together a design committee right. and have that move forward. I mean, I think the number one way, again, is give people less of a reason to want to get off Lake right. Street. Yeah. Uh, that said, the week before last, I actually met with about a dozen residents down on Mary Street uh, during the AM commute. It was myself, Corey Rateau, Officer Rateau from APD, Wayne Schwinnard, the town engineer, Kirk Kelly from uh, Highway. Uh, we certainly witnessed, as you've described and as they had described to us, a very high volume. Uh, Officer Rateau did do some speed monitoring uh, with one of the machines that we have later in the week, or actually maybe even later that day. As we had predicted, and like in a lot of situations, the speed is not necessarily as bad as it's perceived mm. uh, because it's just hard to get going that fast in some of the narrow side streets. That said, um, I would ask for the board's indulgence before referring this to TAC. We've already been having some discussions about actually some of the recommendations that you've made here. Mm. Um, if you let us shop it around internally a little bit, then we can come back for a recommendation. If, if we feel like TAC needs to take a deeper look, we'll certainly mm. recommend that. But before making that referral, let us see if we can make a quick sure. yes, recommendation to this board. Okay. A motion by Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Carroll. Uh, I'll second I'll it, but I had you. something to yep. say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Carroll. Um, I just wanted to state, first I wanted to plead guilty to doing that funky loop, but I'll tell you why it's happening. It's happening because the GPS is sending people that way. The GP, some of the GPS programs have figured out that, that, the that is the route. quickest yeah. way to uh, get through. I mean, specifically Waze will we'll send you through uh, that specific wow. That specific way, so I doubt it was referred to TAC in the past because it's it's kind of a new, it's a new development. So while we're deliberating what to do physically, council might shut me up. Any of your technically savvy neighbors could could uh, engage in some technical civil disobedience and keep reporting <laughs> the road is closed, closed. <laughs> on the GPS program, which you can do, and then it will compute and send them somewhere else. Well, we've talked about. <laughs> Closing the road, having, <laughs> having they are private ways, but of course we require it to uh, allow passages. You could just virtually it. close it and yeah. just tell them. Um, <laughs> I know some of the neighbors that have young children, um, you know, park a couple of cars, there's cones out there. They're doing uh, a lot of creative uh, mitigation, but it's, uh, it's not getting it done. But, um, okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, so. All right, on a motion. Oh, Mr. Greeley, I apologize. Yes, well, just I certainly wanted to uh, welcome Mr. Hurd back here, having sat here 15 years, I believe. And I believe 14. you were chairman 
when uh, you, we uh, enforce that rule on Lake Street. Am I right? The no right hand turns? Yes, so. guilty. Yep. And also, he is the first member of this board who served to initialize the East Arlington Corridor Project. Uh, and did many great things. So. Yeah, and I'd like to, if I could, if I have another minute, to comment on the East Arlington Project. It's um, only if you're saying something good. It's outstanding. Okay, uh, good. I knew it would be, <laughs> and I want to commend the board on their patience. Uh, it, it, I know we all, when I was on the board, and you folks continued to have quite a bit of discussion and hearings. And um, I think the results are: it's a fantastic project, and uh, and most, and, and I know some. People that are friends of mine that weren't uh, in agreement to that now are because uh, proof is in the pudding, and um, and it's it's outstanding. And I'm glad I live down there. Mm. And my, I can tell you, property values in that area went up a notch as as, as a result. So uh, thank you for for your help. On a motion by Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Carroll. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? And if we could, either Mr. Chapdelaine or Mrs. Kropelka, keep um, Mr. Herd Jack apprised of, um, uh, because he obviously also has a lot of people sure. that he's networking yeah. with, um, yeah. whether it's a meeting or it appears on this agenda again. Okay. So. All right, and as far as the uh, pull me over in the morning, you know where yeah. Right? <laughs> and one other thing on on the uh, traffic signal. I fully, absolutely support that. It's the only solution. I know the board voted that, and I look forward. I certainly would be willing to participate on the uh, committee if needed, mm -hmm. but um, it's the only answer, and uh, mm -hmm. I look forward to that, uh, that project. All right, everyone Thank heard you. him volunteer, right? Because yep. I see Adam I'm, right here. I'm, I'm making a note of that. Okay, all right, you know, so noted. Thanks, Jack. Good all to right. see you. Thank you. Sorry you had Thanks, to wait Jack. so long. Say hi to Dale. Uh, he was a, he was a he was a very loyal select tone. <laughs> Unlike I didn't let him stand anywhere near the microphone. <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else uh, signed up for Citizens Open Forum? If not, I'll go to agenda item 13, presentation East Arlington Corridor Project, Spring and Summer. We have the Public Art Consultant Cecily Miller and from Arlington Public Art. Adria, Adria Arch, I almost said Adriana, I apologize. That's okay, actually um, Adria couldn't make it today and her co-chair, Jill Manka, is here. So, and I have to say that both of these women have been totally fabulous to work with as has the whole Arlington Public Art group. It's a really engaged group of people with a lot of positive energy, so I um, thank them. So um, I, you have a packet uh, that I submitted in advance. Mm -hmm. I was going to do uh, some uh, uh, presentation that summarizes some of that material and has some new material, if we can see it on the, yeah. And thank you very much for your time tonight. I really appreciate your putting us on the agenda and looking forward to sharing with you what we're doing and hearing any feedback you have. I think you're projecting, but your Mac went into two monitor mode. So, if so. I go to system preferences and do yep. displays, yep. and then what? See, Set this off? Unfortunately, yeah, so you, were just you, there. you actually, the black screen was actually a real, true representation of what was coming. The, yeah, see, yeah, this is yeah, yeah. So the projector is right, but the computer isn't. Unfortunately, I don't know how to fix it from there. I've just seen it before. Look on gather windows, yeah.
I am the only person at Quantopian who uses Windows as an operating system. Really? Everybody else is either Mac or, or Linux. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're what? They're Mac, uh, Mac or Linux. So, yeah. Pretty much. Ah. I'm the only one we, left. We flipped that way pretty yeah. much, too. Turn this a little bit so I can, okay. All right, so I thought I would start with these are the goals that we had when we began working on a new public art initiative for East Arlington back in September. And the, the first goal and the sort of the prompt, the catalyst for this was to cap the street improvements completed in Capitol Square and along Massachusetts Avenue. Uh, a second goal is to enhance the sense of identity, community, and place in East Arlington. And a third, to build on Arlington Public Arts' past successes and keep a sense of momentum and, and growth going. And fourth, to create um, a cementing of the town-wide art scene, which is something that's been steadily expanding. And I know from my own circle of um, friends and colleagues, there's been a real sense that things are happening in Arlington in the arts. Um, just a couple of constraints to be aware of. One is that, of uh, as you know, the design and construction was already completed when we started thinking about um, public art, including the purchase of street furniture. So we couldn't really contribute a sort of functional um, art piece to, to the landscape. Also, we have a pretty modest budget. Arlington Public Art is raising all of the funds for implementation. Okay. Uh, we held three community meetings, and I also went door to door in Capitol Square and talked to a lot of the small businesses there, met with some community groups like Mothers Out Front, which is a uh, group doing climate change, um, people from some of the local public schools, a number of artists both in Arlington and outside of Arlington. And this highlights some of the themes that came up that have informed our thinking about how to go forward. So one was the, and I won't, I'm sure, be telling you anything new, <laughs> but I hope that you'll be happy to see the things that we're highlighting and um, trying to incorporate into our project. Um, so, People talked a lot about the diverse, independent small businesses of the neighborhood of Capitol Square. They're really, citizens are really pleased that there are not chain stores, that they know the owners of their local stores, um, and consider it part of the, the character of the neighborhood. Also, East Arlington has been home to waves of immigrants, and people asked, is there a way that we can tell their stories? came up numerous times that it would be wonderful if whatever we did could engage kids and families. And that was um, something people said that they loved about the sculpture, the past sculpture shows at Spy Pond and Monotomy Rocks. And in terms of if you say to people, how would you describe the character of your neighborhood? Friendly, diverse, it feels like a small town, you know your neighbors. Um, one thing that came up as a challenge is that there can be a disconnect sometimes between old and new residents, and are there ways that we can sort of bring people together through an art project? Um, it came up that there was a need to define the physical transitions along Massachusetts Avenue to strengthen sense of place. So, for example, the gateway to Arlington at Route 16, Unfortunately, that would be a little ambitious for us to tackle ourselves right now, but it, it's something to think about. You know, what do you want that gateway to be like? And then the transition sort of residential into commercial and then back into residential. Um, it was clear that the Fox Library is a much loved place, a community gathering place, and one person put it as the Fox Library is the face of government in East Arlington. And then um, certainly something I, I think is so wonderful about this community is the incredible green spaces you have and that came up. How can we steward the natural environment here? Um, our natural resources are critical. 
So we decided to do um, two pop-up art projects that would be a more modest budget, that would experiment with different uh, art forms, that would um, keep the momentum going while we planned for a larger project and, and raised money for a larger project. One of these is completed. Um, we called it It's Your Move, and it was an afternoon of play-themed public art at Spy Pond. And the second is coming up on June 18th, and we're calling it the Fox Festival. It's a celebration of the Fox Library, of neighborhood spirit, of creativity, and also of urban wildlife. And we're holding it at the Feast of the East, and it's been totally wonderful also working with the um, businesses that are organizing the Feast of the East. I've joined that committee, and I'm really impressed by how much work everyone does to keep that as a vital celebration. So our partners for this are the Fox Library, the Friends of the Fox, the Thompson School, um, the Capitol Square Business Association, and the artist is a woman named Sarah Petey who has done uh, puppets, created puppets with different communities for probably about 40 years. <laughs> if you've seen puppets in the first night parade in Boston, she's the force behind those puppets. So this was the little card that we distributed about It's Your Move. We can look at the next one. The one, it was all um, kind of inspired by this giant chess set that was designed by an artist named John Tajuri. Uh, he created it while he was an artist in residence um, and it was sponsored by the Somerville Arts Council when I was the executive director there and we actually built the chess set at Somerville High School. So we can take a look at the next slides. Um, and this was uh, put together by kids in the, um, in the metal shop and painted by kids in the auto body shop. And it uh, kind of is a different take on public art, that public art can be something playful, educational, made by the community. This is something, you know, we could do something like this with the Minuteman High School. Um, Arlington could end up owning a chess set like this if you wanted to, to bring out once a month and, you know, celebrate the intellectual game of chess. So, next. And these kids really got into this. We can just go through these pretty quickly. And wait, back to the little guy, because we did have to keep an eye on some of those pieces. <laughs> <laughs> um, and here, there, there were games that kids played, and then here, this was a pretty serious game between the two guys in the back, and the guy on the right is, um, you can remember him because he's the artist we're going to be working with on our big project, but there was some tension around that game. And one of the things I noticed was that people loved the movement, which is just something to think about when we're thinking about public permanent pieces. The kinetic quality um, is something that, that a lot of people enjoyed. Another uh, activity at this same afternoon was we used these Build It discs next um, slide. And this was another resourceful, low cost. Um, I have a relationship with some people at the Boston Society for Architects, and so they loaned us these discs. And people built these great uh, structures with them. People of all ages, a couple kids stopped by after their game, and they, you could see it got bigger and bigger. And we, another, I think, pretty resourceful thing, we borrowed um, blocks from the Little Fox uh, resale shop at the library. They get these beautiful wooden blocks, so we said, can you just set some aside for us and we'll have a huge table of blocks to build with. And finally, we made flags for our Fox Festival Parade. So these were made with stencils by anyone who stopped by. A birthday party at one point stopped by. There were all these kids in little cone, spotted cone hats. And this, you'll see a reveal that there's what the stencils look like once they've been painted on. That's a little bird. And here's a fox. So our, for our next initiative, the Fox Festival, we are running five after-school workshops at the Thompson School with Sarah, and two family workshops at the Fox Library, and one flag-making table at, the, at Porch Fest. Um, and we're going to have a temporary art installation at Spy Pond Park of a little family of foxes, which we've gotten our permits for from the parks and recreation. So. And it culminates in um, this parade with the community-made puppets and a brass band kicking off the 18th annual Feast of the East Parade. So I hope you're all going to come. Thank you. Uh, and this is the card for that. And here you can see some of the puppets.
This is a multicolored fox. A, uh, I'm not sure if this is a fox or a rabbit, actually. A zombie fox, cool. Yes. <laughs> the zombies are everywhere. Well, if we go back to the zombie, this, the message of this is partly like, if you want your kids back from those video game zombie kids, put them in a puppet making workshop because oh, uh, you know, it's hands-on and very creative and fun. And this is the band that's gonna lead the way. It won't be the whole band, but a contingent of this band. So now we get to our, our, our quote, big project. And I think when I talked to you for the first time, I said, we don't really know what we're going to do. We just know it'll be bigger than a bread box. So what we've come up with is the idea, is something we're calling East Arlington Stories. And again, the goals and these echo both what you heard in the neighborhood input and sort of our original goals, our overarching goals. We, wanted, we want to celebrate the diversity and character of the neighborhood by capturing the stories of local businesses. Um, in terms of that suggestion that came up, you know, can we tell the stories of some of the immigrants who live in Arlington? One way to do that is through these very diverse local businesses where there are restaurants that serve cuisine from different places and owners that come from sort of all over the world. So uh, it's a nice way to capture that sense of cross section. We wanted to create something large scale on our modest budget, something that would landmark uh, the Capitol Square area. We want to encourage public participation. A lot of our materials said, be the public in public art. And, and that's something we feel pretty strongly about. We're not less interested in putting a sculpture down that there it is, it's done, and more interested in people being able to get involved. So in this case, what we want to do is have a process where people nominate um, their favorite businesses. And this isn't really meant to be a popularity contest. It isn't really meant to be a, a quality ranking. It's more a collecting of stories and memories. Um, and finally, um, it came up in meetings. It would be great if you, you could create some art that makes the pedestrian experiencing more engaged experience more engaging. So kind of slows people down. Maybe there's something new each you know, every couple weeks. So next slide. So it is really notable that walking less than a mile along Massachusetts Avenue in East Arlington, you can shop, eat, run into friends, gather for coffee, make, buy art, go to the movies, and get help with some of the challenges of daily life. And I love this range, ranging from renewing your home insurance to getting a 100-year-old typewriter fixed. I don't think there are very many places left in the country where you can do that. So Arlington Stories will pay tribute to these locally owned businesses that make the neighborhood so distinctive, and in so doing, uncover the history of the community that's unfolded in their storefronts between the stories of the people and the stories that, the nomin the, that citizens give us with their nominations. So here we see Zaz Pizza's wall. And here is a conceptual sketch by our artist Cedric, uh, Cedric Douglas. This isn't a real person in Arlington yet, but um, this is kind of the idea that we create these portraits, we play with scale. These portraits are going to be made out of paper. Next. Um, so we're planning to try to do 10 to 15, if we can, it's a stretch, um, life-size or larger portraits of local business owners, employees, and or customers. Um, these would be composed from photographs on paper, printed Xerox to actually onto paper, that would be wheat pasted onto the walls. The advantage of wheat pasting, numerous advantages. One is, uh, you know, someone's not it's, it's hopefully a less time intensive so that we can have more, um, more walls addressed, but it can be removed. So after a month, power, power wash it and it's gone. Um, we're going to interview the, the same people and the recorded stories will be available either on the web or by a smart, smartphone app, but there will be a way that people can listen as well as see. So this is uh, one of our, our artist teams um, 
one of the lead members of our artist team, Cedric Douglas. And here he's working on a project that helped inspire our idea. This was a project that an international artist, J.R. from France, the guy who did that mysterious giant image on the Hancock building. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Same artist did a neighborhood project in Roxbury where Por portraits of people were taken in a big community. He has a huge truck that is a huge camera and took all of these portraits of people and they wheat pasted them up onto the library. Um, and Nilu Muchala is our other, uh, is another member of our artist team and she's an Arlington resident and she is bringing sort of that point of view of, of the story. So Cedric has worked with images. Nilu had done a project with Arlington Cultural commission funding um, with excerpts of interviews and historic images of Arlington to kind of give a sense of place of Arlington. So, And the third lead artist is Julia Roth. And she and Cedric together founded a truck called the Up Truck, which will also be at the Feast of, East, of the East. And it's a mobile art lab that does art projects on the street. So we hope that walls like this will be, and the next one will be enlivened with this kind of playful, interesting imagery. And the stories behind this imagery will be um, submitted through the nomination. So this sense of there are stories everywhere. So the next slide. Um, this, these were just sort of my thoughts, but you know, someone might tell us a happy memory of making a gift with their kids at Clay Dreams or at Artbeat, um, going on a first date at Zaz, celebrating an anniversary at uh, Olivolo's, getting together with friends after a bike ride at Olympic Pizza. My favorite, decide it wouldn't be so bad to go vegan after eating at zoos. Just a plug for the, for the animals. Um, and so uh, this last slide is just some of our uh, acknowledging our supporters, the town of Arlington, the Arlington Cultural Council, um, Friends of the Fox Library has been really generous helping us with the workshops. Vision 2020 has helped us with some printing. <clears throat> the Capitol Square Business Association has been so gracious to let, really let us join in with the, to the Feast of the East. And the Arlington Advocate has been great at giving us coverage and we're talking about ways that they can uh, hopefully include some of the content of our Arlington Stories project. And then we're announcing here publicly that we just heard that the New England Foundation for the Arts, the Fund for the Arts, has just awarded us $5,000. Mm -hmm. So that's really excellent. Um, thanks. It's very competitive and so we feel really good about that. We were up against a lot of prestigious projects is a real vote of confidence. So we'll, we'll still be um, looking for some additional money. We know that Chairful and some of you I'm sure have been, uh, have been to that event and hopefully if this year we'll come and purchase chairs. Um, that's one way that we raise money and we'll also probably be looking for some additional private contributions. So now how can you help? One is if you can help us spread the word to your constituents, uh, both about the Fox Festival Parade, but also about the East Arlington stories, this project will be more robust if more people share their memories and their stories. That's what will make it really meaningful. Um, you yourselves could nominate a local business if you need to. You can do it anonymously. Um, and uh, another issue is we are going to have to Zaz is the only business that we've really um, talked to about securing a wall because in part we were waiting to hear if we would get the grant and if we would definitely be able to go forward, but we may need some help um, uh, convincing people to share their walls. And the final thing is um, help us any way you can in raising matching funds. So that's, that's the vision. That's the bigger than the bread box. We're, um, hoping this will kind of infil sort of infiltrate or unfold in the landscape. So if you were driving from, if you're driving up Mass Ave from Cambridge, you cross Route 16 and you're starting to enter into the town of Arlington, you might see one image over here to the right and wonder what's that and another over to the left and then more clustered in Capitol Square and then thinning out again. 
Shakiro. <laughs> thank you. And thank you, Cecily, and all of the um, Arlington Public Art uh, folks. I mean, I, I know how hard you've um, <clears throat> worked at all of this. I have to say, I, I was able to attend one of the, um, the uh, visioning sessions, the feedback sessions, and what was kind of interesting about it is I think we've all been to a lot of feedback sessions, and you know, they tend to be charrettes or breakouts, and, and those are fine and great. But in true Arlington Public Art fashion, um, you know, Cecily and the crew brought in actually one of our local groups, the True Story Theater, who actually helped to solicit the stories through uh, improv and um, really got people to dig down deep into, you know, stories about how their neighbors have been so helpful to them and, and just real, um, you know, personal highlights. And I, I think it's a great uh, um, transition from, from uh, Nilu Muchala's project, um, you know, I, I Am Arlington. Um, I'm sitting here tonight and I'm thinking about some of the things that we're doing tonight, but just tonight we're, um, we're going to be endorsing the cultural district, I hope, uh, application. We just approved a new sidewalk cafe um, in um, <clears throat> East Arlington. Um, we, um, you know, we're hearing about uh, this, we're going to approve the Feast of the East again, I hope. The, uh, yeah, I see Diana's back there. She's wait <laughs> waiting. She's like, I'm um, next. <laughs> the Feast of the East East again. And I see this and so many cool family-friendly activities. And we wonder why so many young families are, are flocking into East Arlington right now. And, and we're, we're happy for that. Um, I, I think we're, we're all quite, quite pleased with that. Um, East Arlington has been kind of the nexus. I used to, uh, it struck me, you didn't point it out, but one of those pictures of the giant chess set in the back, you could see the, the mural on the Boys and Girls Club. Um, and just last week, I know that the um, Park and Rec Commission approved uh, the permanent installation of Kevin Duffy's sculpture. He has a, a swan sculpture that was, was placed temporarily in Spy Pond Park, and the, the kids all love it and such. And all these things, you mentioned transitions, are going to be so important because part of what we'll be taking up, I think, in two agenda items with the cultural district is trying to find a way to um, put Arlington's best foot forward and our face forward for tourism, for the creative economy, but also to try to knit together in, in a way the, um, the east and the center and create those, those transitions and make it one you know, continuous um, experience and, and, and pedestrian friendly and such. So uh, thank you very much for all of that. And I'm sorry for blabbering on, but that's a kind of perspective. Mr. Greer. Yeah, I mean, that was. It's fantastic, but I was like, when are you moving to the Heights? Uh, you said Arlington Stories, so can you talk about any, can you nominate any business in Arlington or only East Arlington businesses? Well, you know, this whole project was, was intended to be about East Arlington, so in this case, it's, yes, it okay. is East Arlington, yeah. Okay. You can bring us back next year. We'll do one for the Heights. Sounds thank like you. a good show. Okay, okay. Um, well, thank you. Yes, you want to leave them with Mrs. Kropelka right in front of Marie Kropelka's, yes. And Joe, I want to thank you for citing True Story Theater. That was really an omission on my part. They were also wonderful partners. And um, there was one session that they did uh, where we made the theme, what do, you, um, what do you care enough about to volunteer for it? That was one of the ways we kind of looked to dig, dig a little deeper. And some very moving stories came out of that, yeah. They're a wonderful resource. Thank so, you. See yeah. you at the Feast of the East. Okay, which, thank you. That's a good sort of segue, if I may. Uh, agenda item 14 for approval. The 18th annual Feast of the East um, is Diane. Hi, how are you? My name is Diane Buxton. I own Love and Other Gifts at 189 Mass Ave. And I'm here, um, Jan Witted actually sent you a letter, but she's out of town, so I'm representing Feast of the East tonight. This is a sample of one of our posters that we're having put up, um, not just in Arlington, but in surrounding towns. Um, we're thrilled to have Porch Fest coming on the 11th, um, mm -hmm. and then followed up by, by the feast. Um, so basically, uh, we're looking for the same setup as we've had in previous years, where we'd like to use Mass Ave between the Capitol Theater Block and Trinity Church. 
and we would place uh, barriers and yellow tape along uh, the streets where the parking is just for the, the uh, length of the festival to give us a little bit more space for our vendors. And then we'd also like to close down Cleveland Street where it meets Mass Ave to create a little uh, island for entertainment um, and the Fox Parade will be there. Um, but uh, residents will still have access to Cleveland uh, via Broadway and Waldo. Um, and then what else? Oh, we'd like to put up signs uh, at uh, Route 16, Orvis Street, the corner of Lake and the corner of Winter. Um, there will be a police detail uh, for pedestrian safety. And uh, we're looking forward to showing off our new streetscape. And we hope you'll join us. Any questions? Mr. Byrne? Um, I do have a question about Cleveland Street. Um, being a one-way, um, would we have to, you know, is there anything we have to consider with this, you know? Yeah, so my understanding is with that in years past, do, do you know, do we block off, do we have someone posted at the intersection of Broadway in Cleveland? Say, a police officer? Yeah. I don't think it? so. I think we just block it off with barriers. All, all the way down? Uh, just down to the, Waldo. Yeah, not even that far. Oh, okay. Just, so. a, just enough space so we can safely have uh, the brass bands there and some other family activities. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll talk with APD to make sure, because we don't want cars coming all the way up and realizing they can't get out to Mass Ave. Right. So I, I'll... Yep. So uh, subject to all conditions, but more approval. Thank you very Such much. Okay. This is great. Moved by Mr. Byrne, seconded by Mr. Greeley. Any further questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. So this Saturday we have Porch Fest, and next Saturday you, <laughs> I'm saying we, you I'm have Feast of the Porch East. Fest. I have a band for Porch Fest too, so I hope nice. you'll come down for that. That's going to be fun. Thank it you. Is. Yes. Next uh, agenda item 15, sign request, Ravine Street. This is from Rebecca and Doug Perlow of Irving Street. It was tabled from our April 11th meeting. We have various pieces of correspondence. Some we have already received. Some are new and recent, including the most recent uh, Comments from Officer Corey Ratto. Mr. Perlow. Well, thanks, folks. I know that after all the important things you've been doing tonight, uh, <laughs> this is probably the, the last thing you need to spend time on. Uh, I want to I wanna say I think we have some a few fundamental misunderstandings, and I mean, I don't need to fight with you about what sign is valid or not valid, but <clears throat> in 96, when Rebecca came before the board as it was then, to ask for a sign. It was because we had great difficulty getting into and out of our driveway. People parked right up to the edge. And whatever the minutes say, the, the, what she asked for and what they presumably were giving us was one space to the right of our driveway as you exit the driveway. I know that the minutes are not clear about that. When the sign went in that said no parking here to corner 20 years ago, it didn't work because and I think that, that it's taken my little brain a long time to figure this out, but the word corner doesn't, people look at it and they don't hear, they don't see driveway. They see corner and they think it means down to Irving Street rather than up to our driveway. And it was an Arlington officer who at one point came to ticket someone who had parked in the space who said, why don't you paint the curb yellow and put an arrow on the sign, and we did that. And it worked for 20 years until, for whatever reason, the sign got taken away. Uh, we're not trying to clear out the whole block in front of our house. Those are valid spaces. People use them for the school. We just want that one space open. Now, Mr. Curo and I had a couple of interesting emails back and forth, and I don't know if he shared them with you. But um, I looked through the uniform manual of traffic control devices, uh, maybe not all the way beginning to end, but through a lot of it. And it's true, I didn't find a sign that said no parking here to driveway. I do think there's some room for, for judgment here. But I did find a sign that I suggest would solve the problem and is valid. It's actually two signs. You have no parking between signs. And you have one up, uphill of the driveway with an arrow toward the other one, and the other one downhill of the driveway with the arrow back toward the first one. And that would be perfectly clear, no parking between signs. So I understand your reluctance to give us a no parking here to driveway sign and perhaps your uh, disdain with our having 
uh, modified the sign to our own needs uh, in years past, but um, the modifications worked. And what's there now doesn't work, and if you can see from the pictures, people pick it, park in the one spot that they're not supposed to park in and leave the rest free. So it clearly what's there now doesn't work. So I would, at this point, request no parking between signs, one just uphill of the driveway, one downhill of the driveway, and that would make it very clear where you can and where you can't park. Um, I think this is going to be a repetition for Mr. Perillo because, you know, we, we did have some extensive back and forth. Yeah. Um, you know, I read the minutes from 1996, and it's really black and white, and, and the fact that it actually specifies from the sign to Irving Street tells me that the Apparently, and I'm not, not questioning what was asked for, but what was granted, according to those minutes, is a no parking here to the corner of Irving Street. Um, <clears throat> I'm very uncomfortable giving a, a you know, specific signage, either no parking here at a driveway or two signs to say, you know, don't park within this driveway, when we know that the bylaws that we have already prohibit that. So if we do that in this case, then I, I fear that we're setting a precedent. We're going to have a lot of folks coming, coming in here. I, I understand there are line of sight issues. I did look at some of the pictures. And I have to say, I, I, I mean, this is obviously you'd make your own judgment whether some of the fencing and shrubs are creating line of sight issues as well, getting out. So I mean, that's obviously something you have to take into account. But um, I, I just don't feel comfortable with it. I mean. I, my understanding is that the no parking from here to corner sign could be moved closer to the driveway so that it wouldn't be possible to fit a, fit a, a vehicle in there. I wouldn't have a problem w with that, I guess. Um, but I guess one of my questions is, do you, do you have reason to believe that, by and large, the, the, the folks who are parking next to your driveway are associated with the school? I think so, because it's during the daytime when I'm usually not around. It's mostly the school. But, and I understand if you put a sign close to the drive that said no parking here to corner, it would, it would uh, eliminate the whole block from our driveway to Irving Street. It's okay with me. I mean, people do park there sometimes, and they, I think they ought to be able to. But it would solve the problem, but, and it would go a little further. Yeah, see, this is where we have a fundamental disagreement, because in my, in my view, in reading the vote, that already is eliminated. So we have a fundamental disagreement on, on that. Okay, um, can you say that again because I don't understand? I, uh, the, the, my reading is that it's no parking to the corner with Irving Street. Uh, okay. so, so they're not supposed to be parking there in the, in the, in the, in the first place. So we're not eliminating okay. anything. Um, it, it seems to me that if this board wants to take any action on this, I mean, short of asking that the sign be placed closer to the driveway. One thing I guess that we could do is we are the landlords of, of the Parmenter School. We could just contact, contact our two tenants and ask them to notify their teachers and students and ask them not to park close to the driveways. And, and um, as a courtesy, I don't know if there's been any communication to the school asking that that, that um, that Over the years, there has been from, from a lot of people in the neighborhood. <clears throat> However, um, I don't know that it's always the teachers. I think it's a lot of the parents picking up the I, kids. I, Last minute, they park wherever they can fit. I, I understand, but, but we could at least, and we can't enforce that um, as, but as landlords, but we could ask them as a courtesy to notify their parent communities and notify their, their staff. Um, and I, I would just say that, that parking that close to your driveway or any driveway is illegal, and I know, you know, you have photographic evidence of a lot of people doing it. I, I really emphasize that um, I, I think the police department has, has expressed their readiness to come and enforce it if they're called, and I think if that's done enough, uh, people start to get the message. I, I don't know, that... One of the... Oh, no, actually, oh, can you stop Absolutely. now? Absolutely. Let me call on my colleagues. And then I'll come back to you again, okay? Mr. Uh, so, read the 1996 minutes. Um, they're interesting and they 
and they have a bearing, but at the same time, I don't feel bound by them. We can do, we can take whatever vote we want. And, and you know, we are not being capricious if we're changing our minds, you know, 20 years later. Second thought is that the, um, the sign, I think that the sign in its current form is problematic, and I would definitely be supportive of a change. And there's a whole range of things that I would be supportive of. And I will just say as my observational comment that I, that, or I guess I'll give two. One is definitely I interpret here to corner as being here to ravine, which me like as a common reader, I would read it as here to ravine, which and I do interpret that as being an implied that, hey, there's this legal space here between this and the driveway. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, my car doesn't fit in that legal space without touching the driveway. And I do not have a big car. So, uh, that's kind of where that's where my thoughts are, but I'm open. To, but I don't have a very specific proposal that I'd like to make. Um, and I'll, I, oh, ju I just did wanna, I just confuse Adam? <laughs> I, my only concern, sort of piggying back before I call on the town manager, is um, anyone who lives in East Arlington, welcome to our world. Mm -hmm. um, if I, I'm not in favor of anything that says no parking from here to driveway, I'd like whatever signage that goes up there. It, it is contained in our traffic rules and order and, and, and issues like that, um, um, it's, especially with that kind of a thing, because I could see all of East Arlington for commuter traffic uh, parking. Um, some people just can't get into their driveways from 8 to 5 every single day in East Arlington. So um, I know Officer Rateau has made a suggestion in here in oh, terms of you? signage, um, which is from, uh, I, I read it really, really quickly. He said, he said the original wording that he suggested to us that he did the research on. And then um, I agree with Mr. Kuro regarding enforcement, sort of the same relief. In East Arlington, we don't give anybody signs. We either you know, do a study and say no parking on this and enforce it, or we just tell them you got to call and have them come down. But since there was a, a pre-existing sign there for many years, I think this gives me the latitude that we should, that something should be up there, but I'm definitely not in favor of the no parking here to driveway, driver to corner. I just I want to say that. Mr. Chapdelaine? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so just in the spirit of trying to problem solve, and then Mr. Mm -hmm. Dunn said something that Mr. Perlow's picture brought to my mind. It seems like from the placement of the no parking here to corner sign, people are interpreting it as no parking here to Irving, and they're trying to shoehorn themselves in, in that one not quite remaining spot mm -hmm. and thereby pinning themselves up mm -hmm. against your driveway. So maybe keeping the no parking here to corner as was an originally intended by the vote of the board, for the, the, the predecessor board, and potentially by this board tonight, maybe just moving the no parking here to corner three, four, six feet, whatever that right amount is, mm -hmm. down towards the corner, giving people that, that natural behavior to park right up to the sign and thereby oh. leaving the proper three feet. Mm -hmm. I, now, I'm not saying that's a perfect solution, but it, it could be an interim attempt to see if it solves. Uh, so you, you said move it in which direction? Closer to Irving Street, okay. so that people actually have yeah. the, the right amount of space create, to park like, correctly. You want to create one space, effectively. Yeah. Um, and I think that stays consistent with not giving special treatment and right. just enforcing existing. The one plus the requisite three feet or so. Yeah. That, okay. yeah. Yeah, whatever that measurement would come out to. Mr. Byrne? So I, I agree with that. Um, and I, I think I said the last one that I am against any sign that is not, you know, by the books, um, like you mentioned earlier. And I am also very against vandalizing signs. Um, so please don't ever do that again. That, yeah, that's just wrong. Um, but other than that, I think that Adam's solution could be an effective solution here. Um, that kind of checks all the boxes in my mind. Along with enforcement efforts. Yes, yes, yeah. well, of course. Appropriate. Uh, yeah. uh, motion by Mr. Burns, seconded by Second. Mr. Kiro. Uh, any further questions? Having been on the board in 1996, <laughs> I have no idea what we did back then. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what um, we did it. I, but I, we it. <laughs> but I did ask it. that we <laughs> that we table this, and I appreciate the extra time. <laughs> Uh, but I can see it's, it's, it's legitimate, uh, the concern, and I, I, believe, I hope that this recommendation, no parking here to, here to corner, will take care of it. Uh, so all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Good to see you again. Um, thank you. Thank you for your patience. Agenda item 16. Thank you. Um, is there anything, Mr. Manager, you want to take out of order? I see Mr. Fields here, or should I just continue on? Um, are you here for scenic? 
Oh, okay. See, I, I think he's here he, for the he, next he, item. Oh, he's for the next one. Okay, I thought maybe it might be 18. Okay, uh, agenda item 16, vote and approval, cultural district resolution. Attorney Heim or Mr. Chaplain? Mr. Fields, do you want to go first? Uh, sure, I'll just be very short. Perfect. Thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> In other words, you've been here long enough, Ted, is that... Uh, no, I'll take the whatever time. Yeah. Thank you, Ted Fields, Economic Development Planner. On behalf of the uh, proposed managing partnership for the uh, Arlington Cultural District, um, I formally request that the board approve the resolution um, here before you endorsing the town's application to the Massachusetts Cultural Council for uh, cultural district designation uh, encompassing uh, a, uh, a stretch of land from uh, along Mass Ave from Arlington Center to uh, <coughs> Capitol Square. Uh, Mr. Carroll? I would like to move to endorse the resolution and to authorize the chair to sign a cover letter to accompany this for the application uh, packet. Okay. Second by. Second. Second. Mr. And if Jeff I could Dunn. speak to it, mm -hmm. just um, this is uh, not, not to take Mr. the field side, but this this I, I think we all know what this is, and this has been underway for a while. And both our library director and our um, planning director have been involved now in this process. Um, there is on the tables there's a draft of the application. It's almost complete. Mr. Fields has done a, a lot of work on helping to gather the. Um, the map coordinates, the lists of uh, cultural attractions, businesses, et cetera, et, et cetera. Um, uh, so once that's pulled together, it incorporates some of the public public input that does have to be sent to the state. This resolution is a necessary part of that. Um, this board does need to also just include a, a cover letter, which would just generally state the the the, the benefits, which I'm more than willing to help okay. draft if that's yeah. if that's if uh, amenable. amenable. Um, and um, that's really just about all I wanted to say. I think you know that the, the three leads on the managing partnership for this are, um, are the libraries, the Chamber of Commerce, and the Arlington Center for the Arts, but there are a number of other organizations um, that, that have been um, at the table as well, both public and private, for-profit and non-profit. Uh, it's been a great uh, community effort, and I think it's consistent with a lot of the other things that we've been, we've been efforts we've been doing here. It's very exciting. Mr. Greeley? Um, we, the, 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 it's from one end of town to the next. Is there what, what's the specifics? Of it's from what is it from? I think it's from Jason Street down to Marathon. I think is the, uh, those are the rough boundaries. It rough. basically runs from Mill Street and the Rail Trail down to uh, Trowbridge Street down to where that more or less hits the Rail Trail. Uh, so it encompasses Capitol Square and uh, the the center up to Mill Street. And Spy Pond Park, right, and um, so a portion of the bikeway and the Civic Block as well. Yeah. Arlington, so you get Arlington Friends of the Drama in there too. Right. Yeah. But let me again ask, why can't we include the Heights? <laughs> uh, well, the uh, the main criteria for designating a district is to uh, locate or have within the district as many cultural attractions as possible. In Arlington right now, most of the cultural attractions are located either in the center or around Capitol Square. So this proposed district captures most of the town's cultural assets. That doesn't mean in later years we can't designate a second district around the heights uh, that's focused on the cultural attractions there. Um, but the Mass Cultural Council that uh, adjudicates these uh, districts, they generally don't like very, very large districts that would encompass an entire town. They want districts that are subsets of a town. So in this case, we went for uh, Arlington Center and the Capitol Square at this time and with a, a thought of going for a, a smaller Heights district in later years. Uh, Madam Chair, mm -hmm. if I might. Yeah, I was there when, and during the initial discussions. This was discussed only actually as an Arlington Center district um, because it's not just the number of cultural um, institutions. It's also the walkability and that, that transition right. is, is there and that you, ha you have enough things within that space. This is much larger than what Mass Cultural Council typically approves, but some of the conversations with them said that knowing our community and, and discussions, I know that one of the 
people comes out and assesses us, because they're going to do a walking tour mm -hmm. for, for this as well mm -hmm. at some point. Um, felt that we could probably get, get this in, so it's almost, we're almost pushing the, the, the limits right now. That's one thing, but the other thing to, to note is when a cultural district um, um, uh, application is, is made, you can take into account activities and institutions that are outside of the district if they're contributing to what's going on within it. So, uh, for example, um, we, we have partnered with Old Schwan Mill, they have come in, um, they, they actually hosted some of the initial meetings on this. So it does incorporate the, the rest of the community, but the actual bounds uh, are of the map, per se, are, are within a distinct distinct area. Thank you. So Concord just got their second one, just, just, just right. so you know. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't. No. Okay. Um, Mr. Greeley, all set? Yeah, thank you. Um, my only question would be, um, when it talks about appointing a town official or officials to work with the, what is it, managing partnership for the cultural district, do you envision that individual or individuals to be current staff? Or is this something that we would need additional staff? And if so, have we already kind of considered that in the budget? Or I'd consider it to be current staff, existing staff. Okay. okay. Um, any further questions? If not, on a motion by Mr. Kiro. Made by Mr. Dunn, and then I heard Mr. Burns, sorry. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being so Thank patient you, with us. Uh, agenda item uh, 17. I said I'm twice there. Endorsement, endorsement of the Scenic Byway Grant, Mr. Chapterlain. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. This is uh, simply asking the board to endorse the Scenic Byway Committee, which is the partnership between Lexington, Concord, Lincoln, and the Minuteman uh, National Park accepting this $5,000 grant and signing on to the MOU that was attached to the agenda item uh, from Freedom's Way National Heritage Area. I uh, discussed it with actually uh, Ted and Clarissa Rowe, who's the town's representative on the Scenic Byway Committee, and just thought it would be appropriate to both bring it to the board's attention and ask for endorsement of accepting the grant and signing on to the MOU. So moved. Moved by Mr. Byrne. Second. Seconded by Mr. Dunn. Any further discussion or questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those, unanimous vote. Good night, Thank Ted. <laughs> and then uh, agenda item 18. Get that to Andrea. Our colleague, Mr. Curo, request use of Jefferson Cutter House lawn. Oh, okay. This is this is uh, pretty straightforward. The um, <clears throat> as you know, the um, uh, Tourism and Economic Development Committee has the visitor center. However, because of the Arlington Safe Travel Project, uh, that area, Uncle Sam Plaza, mm -hmm. is fenced off for the summer until September. Right. Um, so. Uh, you'll recall that uh, before the visitor center building was there that ATED had actually on some weekends had a tent set up on the Jefferson Cutter lawn and run a, a smaller operation out of there. They're requesting uh, permission uh, during the summer uh, to, to do the same. Um, they typically operate Saturdays and Sundays from 10 to 4 when there's not a conflict with another uh, event that we have, um, we have approved. So moved. Moved by Mr. Burns, seconded by... Mr. Greeley. Mr. Greeley, any further questions, discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you, Mr. Carroll. Agenda item 19, discuss and vote regarding block party applications. Mr. Dunn. Uh, I've got an interested constituent who was um, persistent in getting this one onto my radar to get it onto the agenda. Uh, he, they run an annual block party, and they can simply never get 100% of the Thank people to Grand sign Grand. because mm -hmm. of uh, summer travel and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I actually, so there's a proposal in there that says 90%. I would actually like here to make, I'm actually going to make the motion right now. I'm going to move, but I'm going to actually move 80% um, approval. And so I would note that um, I did see that uh, Officer Rateau was concerned about it, but I'm, I guess I'm not sure that he uh, noted some of the details of it because he said he was concerned that not everyone would be notified. Mm -hmm. We're, the intent of this is that it's 100% notification. Uh, and the way you, we're going to affect that is we're going to change the application. The application used to be just a list of all applicants. And now what it's going to be, I mean, like a list of all abutters must sign it. Now what I'm saying is we're going to have one person who is like the designated leader of the block party who's seeking the approval. And they have to promise that they have tried to reach everybody. And they have to get signatures from 80%. I just want to explore what that means a little bit. And so that means if you're trying to do a dead end street where there's five houses, that means you need four people to sign it. If it's 
seven, so six out of seven, seven out of eight, eight out of 10, and then uh, it, that means like nine out of 11, so on and so forth, 12, uh, through, all the way through 12 out of 14. And so, you know, I think about like my dead end street, which has like, you know, 15 houses. We don't do a block party, but if we were, one of my neighbors literally leaves Memorial Day and doesn't come back till Labor Day. Mm, you know, yeah. they don't care, <laughs> know. You, you know, whether or not there's one. So uh, I think that this, this manages the, you know, the, the, the fairness aspects of the, of the neighbors. Um, but I, I'm so moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Carroll, Mr. Byrne. Um, so I, I think I do understand um, the intent here of this change. Um, one thing that did stick out um, in Officer Rateau's letter to me where, you know, say someone is moving or there is, you know, some say they already have like a family graduation party plan that's going to take up, you know, so however much, they, yep. who knows, like, you know, something like that. Um, I'm trying to find out, I, I don't know if I had the, Exact language I was thinking, but adding some sort of line about extenuating circumstances okay. that would be, you know, potentially that's one neighbor who doesn't sign off, um, but and that's because they have they you know have something else going on on their property that day. So maybe would that be covered in this new policy? It definitely. Yeah, the intent of it is certainly the intent certainly was just to say that it um, the person who's organizing it has to certify that there were no objections. And so hypothetically, that person, so in, in my mind, the way it would work is that person says, look, you can't do it that day. And as soon as one of the neighbors says you can't do it that day, that does still serve as an effective veto. Because I'm asking the leader to say there were no objections and I talked to everybody. And to it, if we want to beef that language up to make that a little bit stronger so that's a little bit clearer, I'm totally fine with mm -hmm. that. Because it, 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 putting it another way, that thing that you're saying about if there is a neighbor who's, who doesn't want it to be that day because they're moving, because they're doing a family party, whatever, that person just has the right to stop the party under both the old policy and the yeah. proposed. And, and we would still, in, under this new um, you know, sign-on method, we, the board, like our office would still be um, notifying and getting in touch to, with the neighbors like after because well, we don't sign off on these. Right. Uh, so it here's, just goes in right my mind, the, the way this works is that the, the leader, someone walks in and they say, hey, I want to do a block party. And then Marie and Marianne and Fran say, OK, here's your application. You have to talk to absolutely every single person. And you have to get signatures. You have to try to get signatures from all of them. And they're going to come back with 80% or 90% of the signatures. And Marie and Marianne are going to say, so no one said no, right? And you talked to every single person, right? They're going to say yes. And then they're going to say, OK, make sure you sign and say that you said that and then it's gonna go forward. And in my mind, that process is gonna work just fine. We're very trustworthy here. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, Mr. Greeley, then Attorney Hine. I was just wondering, so let's say it was on your dead end street. Mm -hmm. Do you have to come to us to, to, for permission to block the street? Or you can, you get permission to do the party? <coughs> The way we've been running block parties so far is that it doesn't actually come to the board. It gets approved in the office. No, I know. Yeah. I'm wondering whether you're... I wasn't planning on trying to change that, now. Okay. Thank you. Um, Attorney Heim and then Mr. Sorry, Carroll. Mr. Carroll. Did you want to go first? Oh, I just wanted to note that uh, your experience negotiating the Minuteman Agreement comes through here. <laughs> <laughs> Attorney Heim. I just wanted to note that Mr. Dunn's proposal creates two separate conditions. First is the 100% of abutting residents in the street area have been notified and none objected. And then the second is 90% of the abutting residents of the street area affirm positively their support. 80. I'm I, sorry, 80 80. now. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I do think as it's written, um, it, it, I do agree with Mr. Dunn that it's just a matter of making sure that it's communicated that these are two separate requirements. That one is everybody's been notified, none of those folks objected and then secondly as an additional condition that 80 percent have also said not only do we not object we support it so with those two separate conditions needing to be met i i think that you've you, you satisfy the concern of that one person saying i really don't i can't we can't do it this weekend because we've got I'm, uh, I'm no I, I am comfortable with that but reading through that i just wanted to make sure here okay and a motion by mr dunn seconded by mr carroll and changing and um, number four, 90 to 80%. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you all.
Correspondence received, uh, MWRA correspondence, notice of MEPA comment extension period. Um, is, is there a motion we'll to receive. receive by Mr. Burns, seconded by? Second. Mr. Kiro, uh, any questions, comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? We now will go to new business. <coughs> Mrs. Kropelka? Okay. Attorney Heim? No new business. Mr. Chapdelaine? Uh, just two brief pieces of new business, Madam Chair. First, uh, Chief Ryan, who was with us tonight, um, has actually been asked to testify in front of the United States Senate Committee on Homeland Security and Government Affairs on a hearing they're holding uh, the topic of, uh, which is called America's Insatiable Demand for Drugs, Examining Potential Solutions. Uh, so with his work and the department's work on Arlington Acts and the, uh, all of the, the, the various anti-opiate initiatives that they've undertaken, uh, it's actually risen to the level of uh, the chief testifying before U.S. Senate. So uh, I was blown away and impressed, and I thought it was worth sharing uh, with the Board of Selectmen. That'll be later in June that he'll uh, uh, go to Washington to do that. So I thought that was, uh, again, noteworthy. Um, also wanted to mention, I, uh, I know some of you have probably been tuned in, and I think some of you may have attended the first meeting. Uh, Mass Ave Phase 2, Conceptual Design Moves Forward. Uh, we had the visioning session in Town Hall. We then did the walk shop along uh, Mass Ave several weeks ago. And the initial report out will be on June 16th. Uh, so just uh, uh, not, not much longer uh, at all here in uh, Town Hall. We'll do a report out on everything that the consultants have heard, put that into a conceptual plan. They'll uh, tend to uh, take more feedback from those in attendance and come back in the fall with a final conceptual plan. So uh, it's been well participated, well attended so far, and I think it's pretty exciting of what, um, what we can do in Arlington Center. So if you're able to make it on the 16th, I think that'll be a nice event. And that's all I have for new business. Thank you. Mr. Greeley? No new business. Mr. Byrne? Um, Nothing too crazy. I do just want to congratulate all of the um, high school seniors at both AC and Arlington High um, and wish them well in all their future endeavors. Um, in particular, uh, two of my little cousins who graduated from Arlington High, and we're very proud of them. So thank you. Your little cousins. Or younger cousins. I was going to say, can you still call them? <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> and particularly because uh, one of them is about six inches taller than me. <laughs> Mr. Carroll? Well, I was also going to congratulate the um, the high school graduates and uh, and uh, just just uh, make another one last plea that uh, for the sake of future classes at uh, Arlington High and uh, Minuteman that that uh, voters come out um, a week from tomorrow June 14th and and give uh, affirmative votes uh, on the three debt exclusion questions that will be before them thank you mr. Dunn uh, I'm going to say the same thing as Joe and say and just say that uh, we are aggressively looking for volunteers for the Get Out the Vote campaign, as Madam Chair knows full well. Uh, so build Arlington's future .org and org, 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 org yes. and um, please sign up. We need uh, a lot. We need a lot of volunteers to get out the vote to get these uh, questions approved. That's right, and that will be June 14th. Polls open at 7 a.m. Close at 8 p.m. Um, our next meeting will be June 20th, I believe, 2016. With that, I'll take a motion to adjourn by. So moved. Mr. Carroll, seconded by. Second. Mr. Byrne, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Are those aye. opposed? Unanimous vote. Good night, Arlington.